what's going on everybody just getting everything sorted out here broadcaster was arguing with me a little bit not wanting to actually update what was happening in game but it looks like we're good now all right so day three we left off just about to go to the siege on dresden Gonna make sure we've got everybody's spells sorted out. DeForo says, hey, glad to sort out your issue. Yeah, I had to get an HVAC person out to my house this morning. That's why we're a little late. I was planning on starting about uh, an hour and a half ago originally. But they were able to get it done, so. She should be good. Really only have Hurricane Bow on her right now. Okay. And aura of greater courage. Nice. Okay. All right. I do believe we are ready to go. Just check everybody's equipment real quick. Yeah. Brought, yeah. Okay. All right. Drowsy Plays says hello. Not done watching part two yet, but I guess I'll watch live first. Fair enough. We're about to take on the siege, which shouldn't be too bad, really. First, we have to take on the demon army there, which I forgot that I still had to clear, but shouldn't be too bad at all. Can we recruit? All right, we're gonna recruit some more people for our main army. And then send them up to meet us here. I hate that it always stops you if you run into another one of your armies. But we've just got to clear that fort out and then we can go to Dresden. We should be in pretty good shape now. Unless this just goes really terribly for us. We're actually going to fight this manually, though. Uh, multiple entry points. How to avoid attacks of opportunity as a sword saint. Um, you can take your five-foot step if the casting spells is the issue. Um, not beating up the side armies. We're not going to take on all of them. Um, we could only really kill two of them without too much of a hassle. Reality is they're not going anywhere. These same armies will be here even after you take Dresden. So we're really in no rush. But for right now, we're gonna fight this one. What's going on, Robin? How many hours do I have on Pathfinder now? Um, on this game in total, if you include the beta, I'm at like 350, 360. We're gonna use our stone throw. We wanna kill these dretches in my experience because they really like to cast a, um, I think it's a fog cloud or something. Or a stinking cloud, there it is. Can't remember the name. And it will stun your guys, which is very annoying. Right, we're gonna move him up. Yeah, see, they like to cast that, and it'll stun your guys if you let them. They'll cast it twice normally. Man, that Brock went straight for our archers. I tried to block everybody from moving, but that one still got it out. Oh, got a 
second attack with him. Ooh. All right, so not really going to do any damage with him like that, but we can't really do anything else, honestly, so. We're going to end our turn with the AC boost, since we're not going to do any damage if we attack there. Uh, going to heal our foot soldiers, and then have them attack the, the bows. Have our cleric hit you. I usually try to kill the swarm last. There we go. There's the Vrox dead. Yeah, see that dretch is just so annoying. Those dretches will cost you more turns than anything else will. See, because we can't attack even though it's that guy's turn, so he's just got to end. Archers there. And our cleric. I think we'll just attack these guys since we'll actually kill a few at least. And we can't do anything with our hell knights. That stinking cloud that dredge cast is really annoying. That's why I hate taking the support. Because you can't do basically anything for a hot minute. Succubi as well as annoying when they turn your army. Yeah, they like some of the troops are frustrating. There's that one gone, and then because we basically just have to. Okay, sweet. Our hell knight gets an attack, so we'll have him attack that Darachne. Just keep healing up our clerics that we keep losing, but our rangers can't attack. You can, though. All right, we're going to focus on the, the bows over here before we lose all of our foot soldiers. Right, still waiting on that last stinking cloud to clear up. Gonna lose all our clerics here in a second, though. This fight is so annoying. It's very hard to do this fight without losing a bunch of troops. I shouldn't have moved him. Um, the evil playthrough, you don't see much of a variation in the armies until a uh, later game. For the most part, the troops are the same until you get to that point. Then late game, you'll start seeing all sorts of different stuff. Heal you. Shoot. We'll have him... We'll have him step away, because we can probably sort out these Babaos this turn, actually. I usually avoid the Swarm, because the Swarm is a summon of the Darachne, and if you ignore it, like, the once everything else dies, it'll usually end, even if the Swarm is still alive. there, but now our Hell Knight can move in. Alright, there go our clerics. But, we've pretty much got this in hand already, so we should be okay. Oh no, I, <laughs> I healed the Babao. Of course I did. I targeted the wrong thing because I wasn't paying attention. Well, that probably just cost us a bunch of troops. That's annoying. There's 
them. We can walk over here, kill you. And once this guy dies, it should be the end of it. That's really annoying. We lost so many more troops than we needed to. Hundred percent my fault though. I wasn't paying attention. I healed the wrong thing. Yeah, I'd, I wouldn't assume it would have let me cure the enemy, but apparently it did. No, I get it'll it'll be fine. We're still gonna win this, but that is incredibly annoying. I thought I was on my archers and I clicked and it uh, did not work. Okay, so we lost a ton of people there. I mean, luckily we're at the siege, but still. All right. That should actually do for now, though. Because um, we just got to take this, and then after the siege, we'll be able to do a lot more with our armies in general. And then once you take Dresden, the only place you have to defend, like, completely is Dresden. So... With that out of the way, we'll advance forward, and then moving right up here should trigger the siege. Which act is this? We are at the end of Act 2. Talk to Nura. I could have swore we sent Nura away. Yeah, whatever. Either way, we're going in with the Hell Knights. So, exit. Oh, I have to take Regil with us when I do this, don't I? I will. We will... We'll leave Camella since we're taking Regil, and then we'll have to level Regil up when we get in there. I forgot it forces you to take him when you do that. But we should still be okay. Yeah. Red Pawn, which means your name in Italian or any other name except, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. That's, I can understand why you wouldn't want to go by that shortened version yet. Do the heals in Crusade mode damage the undead enemies? I know it heals your own undead troops. Um, offhand, I do not know. I can't say I've tried it. I'd give it a solid maybe. Next time we fight an undead uh, battle, I'll give it a shot. Okay, but we're here with Regil. First, we gotta level Regil up. Otherwise, he'll die a lot. Now, that said, we're just gonna take his auto levels because we're not using him really. Okay. Everybody else needs to buff up. if you even have any buff to use, you just hit things. Alright, and our Shroud of Water. Alright, and we're ready. So we start off in the graveyard here. It should be, yes, there's a helmet there, the Graveyard Keepers, which gives you extra AC against undead. And then, don't remember what's in this one. Scrolls. Uh, so, what should one look for in a build to get their early game on core unfair? Um, 
Mostly being able to hit things is primarily the biggest concern at those levels. Well, turn on turn base. That's primarily the big thing, is anything that's going to enable you to actually hit the enemy, which is most of the fight early game on those higher difficulties. Cheers, join the battle there. No match for me. Jeez. Things didn't really have much health, did it? Oh no, okay, I hit. I hit it a bunch of times. Only well, looked like I hit it once, but apparently she did a bunch of extra damage. Okay, so. More of a We're gonna have her. I think we'll leave that one there because Sila's right next to it. And then. We'll have her scorching ray that one. If it'll let me. Every time I click on it, it uh, deselects. It's weird. That one instead, I guess. Hey, he says, hey, Mort, I'm thinking of rolling an elemental engine for my next run with fire as my main element. What difficulty you think would be more appropriate for that? Um, you could probably do it on core, but the first act will be a little rough if you go energy because um, the energy blasts are going to suffer from resistances and stuff. I mean, fire damage in general will, of course, but um, you just got to be like the first act might be a little rough on like core or above, but you could probably do it until you can get ascend an element. That's really the main thing to keep out for. Uh, mythic perks make bows strong. Yeah, the myth, like the, the ranged mythic abilities are really strong. Okay. So, Ninio, what are the will saves? They should be relatively low, yeah. A lot of demons have really low saves. I don't know that I want to waste spell slots on Phantasmal Killer yet. I think we'll just give everybody... Well, I probably don't even need to use haste at this point, to be honest. We'll just use Magic Missile. But it's not letting me target that guy for some reason. Like, every time I go to select him, it just goes away. Very odd. Most of that was from her. She missed and then uh, got some damage from her regular, um, her mythic stuff, where she uh, does damage even if she misses. Okay, Regil. Kneel before me. Not too shabby. Nice. And turn on our covenant before I forget about it, so we'll stop doing reduced damage. And we'll try to kill one of these guys. Took a couple attacks of opportunity there, though. I didn't think I was close enough for him to hit me, but apparently I was. Alright, there we go. Wendy did a bunch of damage and killed the last of them. Uh, what's going on, everybody? Sammy says hi. Okay, so... There's that. Never really bother with the barracks on my runs. Okay. Give me two seconds, guys. I got somebody at my front door.
Okay, sorry about that. Just random people trying to sell, like, sometimes when you own a house, you'll get people knocking on your door trying to sell you stuff. Oh, hold on, I forgot to move my chat back to where it was. Okay. Sorry about the interruption there, guys. Winduog dual class. I like to make Winduog a demon slayer. Right, moving forward. We're not going to bother with the barracks. I never really go in there. Okay. Wow. I have wow just destroyed that poor Hell Knight. Okay, what's the... There we go. They have low, like they have really low saves, which means if I use Phantasmal Killer, they'll probably definitely die to it. But that's not something I want. Like I don't want to waste the spell slots on it. Like after after this mythic rank that we get from clearing the siege. We should be in good shape, because then I'll pick up Improved Abundant Casting, and she'll get just a ton of spell slots, so it won't really be a big deal if we uh, use them. But until then, I really kind of want to conserve them for the bigger enemies here. Like, from, like I hate... Turn base right here is ridiculous because the camera's always like bobbing around everywhere. Okay, so we got our Smilodon. We might be able to. Nah, we missed a bunch of attacks. But Smilodon did some work on that guy. Oh, oops. I just skipped my horse's turn. That sucks. Charge in and hit that one. Okay, then with Regil, I think we'll try to finish off this one. Since it's a, well, if I could stop rolling. Wow. He did not even need great rolls, and he missed every single attack. You can disable camera following in the settings. Uh, well, for the most part, I like it. See, that's the problem. Um, like, outside of specific areas, I enjoy having it on. So I like when it snaps to the person you're looking at, you know? But there are select portions where, like, there's different, like, elevations on the map you can be at. It likes to, like, bob the camera up and down as if it doesn't know which one of those elevations you're on. can just slumber that one. It has a low slave era, a low uh, save, so she should be able to get it pretty easily. Yeah. And our character really can't go wrong because there's just a ton of enemies to hit over here, but we're going to try to kill the Calvacus. Nice. And our Smilodon, if it gets all of its attacks here, we should really do a lot of damage to you guys. If there's one dead. Nice. Okay. And we can actually see where our Smilodon's starting to fear because we picked up a Cornagon Smash. Okay. Our horse killed that one. That one slumbered. Let's see what attack this one. There we go. And then Regil. Charge that, oh, or not. Sometimes the charge function is still kind of messed up and it does not work as well as you would like.
Okay. So this is why, this is just a random thing, because I talked about why I like Close to the Heavens or Instrument of Freedom for the uh, initial, like, mythic hero levels. And that is because, while well, I can't hit him with this without turning off Gather Power and taking Burn, what I can do is use Close to the Heavens, which has a really big range, and just hit him from here. And if that wasn't the last guy, I could have walked forward, got myself in range, then done close to heavens as a standard action, and kind of moved closer and still done damage in that same turn. Is the Kineticist class in Kingmaker any good? Kineticist is amazing in Kingmaker. There are a lot of very broken builds with uh, Kingmaker and the Kineticist, because in Kingmaker, you're not dealing with nearly as many things that have resistances to all of your elements. So our goal is to come up here first. Okay, this guy. He has a decent fortitude save, so I don't know if it's going to work. But if we could one-shot this dude with Phantasmal Killer, which would be great. But the will save, he has a plus 9, and the fortitude, he has a plus 13. He has to fail both of those for Phantasmal Killer to actually kill him. So, we'll give it a shot, see if we get lucky, and then start combat that way. It killed him! Ha! <laughs> okay, yeah, so he failed his will, which is... If you fail the will save, they'll take damage. He rolled a 15 against a 23. And then if they fail the fortitude save also, they just flat out die. And then he rolled a another 15 against a 23. That's why I love Fanta uh, Phantasmal Killer. And then, so that's that's why we're giving her all that spell penetration and stuff. So she just keeps getting more and more likely to just kill things outright. Uh, the Smilodon is from our Winduog. We have her running um, Demon Slayer. Singa donated $5, said, so how likely is getting through the entirety of this game without a disqualifying death? Uh, it's... It's questionable, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I'll probably get to about, at, like, the end of Act 3, the start of Act 4 is when it starts getting a little tougher. And if I die early, it's probably going to be around then. And then, like, during and after Act 4, it's anybody's game. I Who knows? I might, uh, might not make it. Okay, so... I think it should only be like one or two guys. We'll just kill these dudes real quick. I think we can. Oh, wow. I started that off with a. Jeez. Yeah, Windu got a crit and just deleted that dude. And then her uh, mythic abilities activated, which did damage to everybody else. That was a. One and done. Alright. Uh. How do I handle not having a healer? I do have a healer. Ember is a healer. A lot of, like, so she gets a ton of heals on top of all of her fire damage. And we're just on normal, so that's about as good as we need. Um, it's kind of reading chat here. Where did the other people die at? One person died at the water elemental. One person yesterday died at an ancient ghost that you can fight in Act 2 that we avoided because it's ridiculous like if I had fought it I probably would have died too to be clear the thing is ridiculously strong and um, then I think one more person died this morning actually um, at uh, the Lost Chapel okay So this guy is annoying if he gets a chance to actually hit you, because he'll use like phantasmal putrefication and stuff, which is really annoying. So we're gonna heal up Regil. Our guy. See if I can hit. Yeah, we're gonna hit an extended range blast on that guy. Um, I, 
I don't think it was Haz. I think it was Drass Gaming yesterday, and this morning it was Cormac TV, something like that, the Twitch streamer. I don't know exactly how to pronounce his name, so if I'm messing that up, sorry. I think it's Cormac, though. All right. So I think we missed our attack there, didn't we? I wasn't paying attention. Oh no, it started before I even attacked. Because there was the attack right there. That was weird. Normally you'll see it hit and then combat will start when you attack from stealth. Alright, and then we got this guy up here. There's a barbarian type of dude right up here who is not fun. This guy right here. So what are his... He'll go into rage as soon as battle starts. We might... I wonder if I could potentially... Because he's got a low will save. I don't really want to try the Phantasmal Killer thing. But I could potentially slumber him. No, he, he made his save, unfortunately. Because as soon as battle starts, he goes into uh, rage. Which will give him extra bonuses. So, yeah, he just got a good roll there. He rolled a 16 versus a... 19 that's all he needed to clear it and he had nine modifier so all right turn turn based on real quick for this guy because he he can mess you up pretty quick actually if he gets the chance to actually hit you <laughs> the comp keeps cheating with these rolls sometimes Uh, okay. Right, we'll move Regil over here to make sure he's thoroughly flanked. Couldn't really attack, though. And then Windu gets her full attack. No match for me. Let's see the... He is evil. Might as well smite evil, the guy. I really don't want to try to Phantasm. He's got a really solid Fortitude save, so I feel like that would be a, a waste of time. No Acid Resistance, though. We'll try hitting him with Acid Arrow. Yeah, a little bit of damage. Ah, yeah, there it is. He's almost dead, but as you can see, if he gets a chance to hit you, he does some serious damage. He almost killed Windu in basically one, one full attack there. some reason it wouldn't give me his full bar there and then it uh ah, it's annoying this guy's pretty much dead anyway though so we'll be fine there we go. okay there's a pet over there I'll find a spot where I can actually yeah there we go He's got a bunch of unique magical items. Don't really need that one. Can't remember. Six, four. That's not bad, but I think everybody we've got already has something better. He'll wind you up. Try to use all these potions. You can get a lot of potions from all the dead soldiers at uh, Lost Chapel. Kind of ridiculous, actually. Alright, and then 
kill this dredge. We'll turn off turn base for that. This dredge has a key we need. That Nabasu almost killed him, yeah. That Nabasu is no joke. The Mogla at um, Lost Chapel, I'm guessing you're talking about. Yeah, land isn't a bad choice, but you know why I don't choose land? Because land's a monk and I don't like him. Okay, we gotta be really careful in this hall. I'm waiting until everyone, I either see a trap or everyone fails their perception uh, check on it. I can't see the outline of the trap, but I can see the, uh, the line for it. Would I suggest to make main story side quests, exploration or whatever? I've got dreads and I want to explore more stuff, but it seems to be a bad idea because of the banners. Um, I wouldn't worry about the banners too much in Act 3. Like, you have all the time in the world to do stuff in Act 3. Oh, I'm trying to pick that with the wrong person. Because we don't have Camella with us, and she is our... You know what? I don't even think I can disarm those, because I don't have Camellia with us, which I've completely forgot about. Let's move that over here. All right, we're going to take the wall, because I don't have... Camellia with us, and I'm not walking through the, anywhere near those traps. Those traps are ridiculous. Okay, so we're going to try to just scale the wall, and then we'll come in through the other side of the temple to get the stuff there. We should have more than enough to clear this stuff. But we don't have... trap person with us which shouldn't be too bad overall but it might cause us some problems we're gonna have to take things a little slow okay now first thing we're gonna do is come up on the wall here to get rid of the giants that are using the catapults We'll do this in real time unless it gets hairy because we should be more than okay here. I don't like fighting on this wall in turn base because it's so cramped as it is. If I had, if I had, uh, if I hadn't came in with Regil and I went through the front gates and used um, Camellia, we would have our trickster with a, or our trickery person with us. But without her here, I can't reliably disarm those traps, and we are not about to walk into those. Like every other trap around here, we could probably take, but those two in the temple there are ridiculous. They'll one-shot an entire party, even on normal. There's a trap in here, too, if I recall correctly, because the uh, plate for it's right there. That said, this trap, not as big a deal. Now, of everyone I've got, who has the best trickery? So I've got a plus seven from pretty much just my dexterity, really. And then... So I've got a few people with plus seven who could potentially, in theory, maybe do that. Unless you have an actual point in it, I don't think it'll actually still even work. 
Yeah, actually, because even with the seven, I think you still have to have an actual point in the thing. All right, so. When all else fails, just have a pet walk into it. Alright, so there's the gate there. side and take care of the ash giant over here. that done. Then we're going to walk the rest of the way across the wall here. Now, if I remember correctly, there isn't a trap in this one. So there's one that's trapped and there's one that's not. We should still have the perception to see the traps, just not to actually undo them. forgetting to turn the Covenant of the Inheritor on. It, like, it turns itself off all the time. And while the buff is ridiculous, having to actually remember to turn it on is the other thing. But as you guys can see, our build is really starting to take form. We're just tearing through things. Any reason you aren't using Camellia? Um, I wanted to come in with the Hell Knights and I dropped Camellia for Regil. Uh, we'll be switching back to Camellia pretty soon. She's a main part of my party, really. Um, we're just not using her for the siege is all. Luna Rea says, just drag the Covenant to your uh, hotbar. Listen, I have to have clean hotbars. It's very important to me. And if I can use a flyout menu, I'm going to. Which is just a weird OCD thing for me, but I absolutely will not put anything on the hotbar unless I deem it absolutely necessary. Which is a weird list of criteria that applies to me and basically no one else. And there's the Darachne. Stop. I'm always ready. Having Regil's Hell Knights with you to use as fodder is uh, really convenient. Sila took a little bit of damage from poison there. Uh, thought I had a remove something or another. Remove disease. That's just literally the disease and sickness effect, so that shouldn't affect that. Um, ah, we'll just let it play out for a second and then heal her. Uh, 
restoration scroll that we can just fix that with real quick. That's why I like carrying the scrolls, even if you can rest on normal. Oh, man, I aggro aggroed those two from all the way over here somehow. Everybody healed up. Um, Regil is... Like, if you come in with the Hell Knights, he has to be in your group. That's why we're using Regil, because we came in the side with the Hell Knights. I hate these Rimmer Axe right here. Because they got a bunch of them clumped up right on top of each other. I think there's another one just slightly up the stairs here. That might be... That might be on core. I'm pretty sure there's three of them up here on core. We're gonna kill this guy real quick. I'll try on turn base just in case, but it's Fallen Crusader here. You know what? We're gonna give it a shot. <laughs> God, I love Phantasmal Killer. What did he roll? He rolled an 11 against the will. Because he rolled literally a nat 1 and then 10 modifier. And then he rolled a natural 1 on both of his saves. And we one-shot him with Phantasmal. So if you haven't figured it out, that's kind of my goal for Ninio. Is to just give her a ton of spell pin and Phantasmal killer. Now, late, like a little later in the game, it's going to be less useful as things start to get better saves. But... It's still pretty effective, and it honestly makes me laugh. So, here we are. Um, I think that full plate was an upgrade for Sila. Not really, actually, because we get the constitution. Unless, yeah, until I get a constitution belt, because it's basically the same. I, could, I mean, technically it would give me one more dex, but I would lose a little constitution. And I don't think, do I have? I think one of our pets had a constitution. Yeah, there it is. We'll actually move that to Sila. And then switch her armor out so it's not conflicting. And there we go. I take it you will also use Myth uh, Specialize her into Illusion for DAC. Yeah, yeah. So the whole point of Ninio is just stacking spell pin and the saves and stuff so she can get that as often as possible. Um. We're gonna like the first things first though is we're picking up abundant casting, but like after that we're gonna start giving her like the spell pin feats and stuff, the the mythic ones that you can get after you get the regular ones. Uh, what was I doing? Okay, so heal everybody real quick. Recast uh, mirror image. And then there's another Arachne over here, I believe. I think it's just the one. No, it's two. Okay. Right. Regil lost his turn to confusion. I'm gonna have him hit this far one and then let everybody else focus on the one that's real close to us. What did I get for her first level? We picked up abundant casting 
Um, and then for her third level that we're about to get at the end of the siege, we're going to pick up improved abundant casting that gives her the um, extra four, five, and six caster levels, which will just give her a ton of spell slots to do her thing with. Okay, we're going to cast Burning Arc. Ah, it didn't do quite it. No, no, it did kill that thing. It just took a while for it to fall over, so I didn't notice. through this house to the top side of the temple where we're going to pick up some items and kill some incubi. Now my original plan was to come through this route but forgot we didn't have Camilla with us and I was not about to hit those uh, flame strike traps that you can find in that hallway. These guys have pretty low saves against Phantasmal Killer, like Incubi do. Incubi, Nubasu, the Minotaurs, they're all usually pretty susceptible to it. Unfortunately, we got spotted before she could get the cast out, but... I think there's... Well, nobody's wanting to move, so that's the thing. Ah, he got the fortitude save, but he still took damage because he failed the will. Oh, he rolled a he rolled a perfect twenty. That's why he got the save. <laughs> Do I think it's possible to go through the game on unfair with ten witch or ten winter witch on trickster path? Uh, maybe, man. Unfair is like it's a different beast. You get like even min max like best builds are still gonna have a really time hard on unfair. So it's it's really just a down to persistence on your end plus maximizing your chance to actually hit things um that said winter witch uh i don't know that i'd even bother with that prestige class because that gives you the like half damage through immunities and stuff but through ascendant element you don't even need that so i don't know that that's a prestige class i would really try to do for unfair why am i not Oh, um, for some reason I only get a standard action this turn. That's odd. Charge him with a horse. Natural one. Nice. Windy. Windy can probably kill him. Yeah. yeah. Retreat is not an option. Dead. Oh, there's one more over there. Didn't see him. Nice. At level 10, we should pick up, I think it's supercharged for our kineticist, which allows us to... Uh, Reduce uh, burn even farther, which should let us turn in power back on. Have I seen the Trickster's meta magic feat? Um, yeah, Trickster, like in terms of like sheer single player damage, Trickster is usually the way to go. Like if that's what you're after. It has a ton of stuff that, like, you know, a little later in the game will let you do a ton of damage for one person. Actually gonna rest in here, pick up our Triceratops statue that we don't need, or not gonna use right now anyway. I know why you want to become stronger. 
You were scared of your weaknesses and helplessness as a child. And you... The only thing I feared as a child... Now that we've rested, buff everybody back up real quick. Here pretty soon, uh, we'll be able to take three points of burn with Shroud of Water, which will help out. Any clue when the DLC will be coming? Um, I imagine early next year is probably the, the correct bet from Lunarea there. explore the rest of town a bit. We came in there, but we're going to come down through here, go up through here, hit the prison, and basically just do the rest of this before we go fight the Baylor. Or uh, We're going to go get the keys from everywhere else, and then we'll bypass the little gauntlet event here because I don't like doing it, and then we'll fight the Baylor. So fun fact about that Baylor, you don't actually have to uh, engage him at all. So a lot of people think that you have to attack that Baylor, but that Baylor is actually on a timer. If you just stand back and let the rounds pass, it'll eventually, like after like two or three rounds, just skip straight to um, the part where they, uh, where uh, Graybor teleports in and tries to kill him. Okay, I think. We're gonna turn off Gather Power and take a little more burn so we can activate uh, Elemental Overflow. I feel like I could probably hit this votary. Yeah. Okay, then we're going to turn on our elemental overflow. Turn gather power back on. Pass our turn. Wendy only gets one shot because we only get the standard action, but... We should be more than okay. I slumber one of these if I can. She's gonna have to move, so she can't. Like, this doorway's blocking my angle on everything, so it's messing up my plans. Is that what the hell is that elemental overflow elemental engine does not have that right um yeah so elemental overflow is what most kineticists get and then uh, elemental engine get the thing that replaces elemental overflow but that gives them more just straight up damage okay, we're gonna I conceivably i don't know if i could get we're gonna give that fireball a shot. I don't want to use her phantasmal killer on these guys. Nice. That was a good fireball. Okay, we're gonna hit the votary again. Nice. He's almost dead now. And then Wendy should deal quite a bit of damage here. Yeah. So she's, like she's gonna hit that guy and then all the damage from the uh, mythic ability she did just she just wrecked like that entire big group there and then Ember can definitely kill that guy we're gonna use burning arc see if I can't get that to hit both of them yes and we'll turn off turn base for the rest of it <coughs> Turn that on. I'm down to 
stairs here where we should run into more demons. The old Brimarak there. The bane of my existence. We're not going to bother breaking down this door because we were already on the other side of it. That's where we came in at. I think I just phantasmal red me. Ninio will be getting phantasmal webs. Actually, does she not? She either doesn't have it yet or she gets it soon. One of the two. Yeah, she she doesn't have it yet, but we'll learn phantasmal web ourselves here pretty soon. We're gonna clear the small entrance part real quick. Now that the ash giants are dead, there's no danger of just hanging out down here because we're not getting hit with um, the catapults. I forgot that guy's, that guy's in stealth in the corner over here and I always forget he's there. So now he's gonna hit us with Phantasmal Future Faction. I hate that spell. Let's forget it ourselves here pretty soon. That's another one of the spells we'll be using ourselves quite a bit, Phantasmal Future Faction. You just got to be careful you're not trying to use it on uh, enemies that are immune to mind affecting, because that's what it is. Okay, so there's all that. These two took some damage to their scores, which we have scrolls. Because... Camellia has some restoration, but we have plenty of scrolls to offset that. our XP. Yeah, we're getting pretty close to level 9. About 60% of the way there. Now, should be a fight going on over here. Can I use it on Undead if you have the right Bloodline feed from Sorcerer? Uh, possibly. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Um, I just know you gotta watch out with using the Illusion stuff on things that are immune to mind affecting, which is mostly the Undead. There are a few uh, random enemies here and there that are immune to mind affecting as well. All right, we're not going to go into the dungeon. Because even without Nura, that thing is still there. Like, even if you don't choose to go with Nura, that ambush is still waiting for you if you try to go in there. Did I just fail an athletics check? This is a surprise. Stupid thing. Oh, I failed it twice. What is the DC on that? Jeez. The 26. And our horse failed it with a 20. Jeez. Okay. Oh no, what are you doing? Oh lord. Here we go. That's going to be a problem. Horse is about to die for sure. <laughs> yeah, there it goes. Okay. Try to get here because that we pulled that archer somehow, and now we're getting attacked from up there because it glitched out on me. That sucks. We'll have to take the rest of our party the long way around. So we failed that athletics check, but it glitched out and it threw our pets on top of the building anyway. Okay. Gonna 
have to go the long way around there, too. Because I don't want to do the assault on that door without our pets. That's a frustrating one. But the door over here is open, so we should be able to go through here and then make our way back. That's annoying. And we're in combat the whole time, technically, so. There should be like a rock or something up here, too. Before this gets out of hand. Okay. Let's get rid of the votary. The light. There you oh, go. Well, see, you actually did something good for once. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, see where it's still trying to tell me that he's in combat? Bugged out on me, wasn't wanting to tell me uh, I could use blood blast, and I was like, I definitely should be able to. Yeah, if we're having uh, this is gonna be pretty annoying. We've only got confused on our mains, so that won't be a huge deal. And then Minio died for a death door, which we can cure that soon, too. What a bug, man! That ledge messing up our pets is really. Caused us some issues. I will be fine. Because there's the Dirachne's dead. And now... There's nothing else up here. All of that stuff is what our pet is engaged with. We're going to wait a second. Okay, so we're out of combat now, by the looks of it. Okay. So we're going to get these guys up here. Take a look at where my pets went. Okay. Looks like they killed enough to actually be out of there. That should teleport our whole party. Yeah. Okay. What a mess. No, no, so, uh, your pets can take Death Door and everything just, like, fine. I think the Smilodon actually killed everything, and the horse was just unconscious. So, we're gonna rest. I don't know offhand if that's gonna cure the Ember's Death Door, but if she dies, she dies, whatever. Pets can technically die, however, the next time you rest at a safe place, they're automatically resurrected for you. Okay, so Ember took Death's Door, which is frustrating, but otherwise we're in good shape. So like I mentioned, things can go wrong, even on normal. For instance, you can try to go up a ledge, and only your pets will go up, and then they aggro half of that section of the city, and then you have a ton of problems. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a couple flying rocks that are kind of messing up. Like, their animation's all messed up, so it shows them in the air flying, but they're just, like, standing still. Yeah, yeah, I'm not worried about her death door condition. She'll be fine. We're not trying to go up that ledge again, I can tell you that. We're gonna go this way. Uh, 
There's the Vrox. The ragdoll physics always gets me. Guarding the end for some reason. Clear over here in the prison before we go in the end. And the square is basically dretches for the most part, besides these two. I think there's a, a sure over here somewhere. Yeah, there is, or however you pronounce it. The rest of it should just be mostly dretches. So she charged her smile on into the alchemist in the shop and catapulted him into the bookshelf behind, pinging him through the wall. Yeah, like that ragdoll is hilarious. I love that stuff. Like sometimes you just hit something and it goes flying in a ridiculous direction. Who will I romance? Um, probably Winduog. Hers comes up the first and it's the easiest. So I'll probably just roll with that. Votary. Wow, that died before I could even get to him. Crusaders killed him. That's a first. Alright, and we already cleared the other side of this door, so we can just hit the lever. Yeah, so... <laughs> Sometimes we can't catch up with it, but those that rock that just went flying by their animation messes up But they're still considered like in the air flying. So yeah You can see their shadow and it's just static <laughs> oh. Why come on now guys A bunch of my guys got hung up trying to come through the little opening there. That was strange. Alright, and that should bring in our troops. What's that up when I'm running? Uh, I'm using my Blood Kineticist build, and then we're using these guys. Regil's not normally in our party. We're only using him because I like to come in through the side for the siege, which requires you to take Regil with you. Alright, so head to the dungeons. We'll talk to Aru so we can recruit her, but not actually take her with us. Everybody's potions. I want all the potions. Okay. Alright, so we'll head into the prison, do the stuff there, get the key from the dretch, then we'll head back towards the inn, do the stuff in there, get that dretch, uh, that dretch's key, and then we'll go make a fine trophy. open the gate to the courtyard. Do the Baylor fight, it's really more of a timed event, and then 
we'll be able to rest up. Now, I know for a fact the resting in the courtyard will clear death door. the ascending succubus yeah she's right there in her cage we just got to kill the enemies first okay now what are his saves all the minotaurs here are different so it's hard to remember what has what okay but we might what's the dc on that it's probably like 19 yeah yeah we could it's possible to hit him with slumber but i think we'd be better off just doing damage instead Open this cell so we can kill that dredge because he has a key we need. And they have like no health at this point, so that was a nice one shot. Then we open, well, we have to talk to Aru first, but we did the stuff at the chapel, so we can sing a song together, which is actually kind of cool. You only see this if you do the stuff at Lost Chapel, which I think is kind of neat. Catch up on chat for a second while they dialogue. Uh, am I planning to kill the big bad demon in the Citadel? No, uh, Blight Maul will probably skip. Just because, I mean, we could probably kill him because I have the Summon Fallen Paladin through our Close to the Heavens mythic stuff. And that Paladin is actually immune to Blight Maul's attacks completely. So in theory, I could use it as a tank, but I'd rather not risk it, to be honest. Uh, if I'm going to Zada, why not romance the succubus? Because I absolutely do not care about romances. And do the rest associated with losing unwinnable plot fights count against that one super difficult achievement? Um, maybe? I don't know. It's 75 total rests for that achievement, so I would assume probably. Yes. Okay. And now she's recruited... Uh, kind of want to swap out Ember, but I don't think we're going to. Regil's locked for the time being, because we came in with the Hell Knights. He's who I actually want to get rid of, but we're going to send Aru on. Though, at this point, she's recruitable, so we don't have to wait until she contacts us after the siege. We have the key. Now we're headed towards the inn. Tavern. Together we stand. You're a good person. I like that. Yes. Mr. Bone says, "Great stream. Keep up the good work. I appreciate it, man. Thank you." Exarch of Justice, like nobody gets them, not your party, not you. <laughs> now that key is not the key to go to the end. Those there, you can find three keys on Dretches, and you'll see what they do here in a minute. They save you a lot of trouble if you go find them. Okay. Now we're going to turn this on turn base just because I hate it so, so much. I hate this fight right here. 
There's like a big mini boss in that room over there, and he's not nearly as bad as trying to fight all these Babaos and that Shadow Votary. Okay, I don't think I've got the range to hit him, but I should be able to shoot him once. Use our free action to turn on our Inheritor, and then I think extended range isn't going to do it. I can move and cast this, though, which is what we're going to do. It's 32. Okay, and then Ninio. I don't know what that's like. He's got low saves. We could conceivably do that. I'm going to cast Haste, and then if she's still alive on her next turn, we might try to just Phantasmal kill her, that guy. Alright, and then... I conceivably... Get up there. Alright, we're just going to take the potential attack of opportunity, and then pressure that votary. And then you... Ah, it's not going to let me charge straight to him. Kind of the same deal, though. We're just going to move you up here. Okay, and then... Right, I've got a very good chance of just slumbering one of these Babaos. And somehow still missed it, because that's the way it goes. Rolled a 17. Nice. Senga says, woo! Okay, uh... Watching this challenge play through is great for someone like me who would like to see something like a speedrun in this game and still understand something about its plot. Yeah, um... I certainly wouldn't call this a speedrun by any means. Like, honestly, we're just going through pretty quick because we're skipping, like, most of the cutscenes and stuff. Okay, so... Hmm. Can I have Wendy move up and shoot him? Gonna have you extended range the Babao. Forty-eight damage, not too bad. No, no. Your image, phantasmal web. That's annoying. Now right, we're gonna see if we get lucky and just phantasmal killer this dude. No. Ah, he succeeded his will throw, so we didn't even hit him. Rolling eighteen. Ah. He's just gonna move up. He's webbed, but he's so close, he still gets his attacks, so. Should eat through his mirror image at least. Now, he is webbed, so I can't do anything with him. Don't know if. Yeah, I should be able to move far enough up to do that. That should be the last of his mirror image. Can't do anything with Regil because he's webbed. Windu will get her full attack and should kill the guy. Yeah. Killed him and the Babao. I really enjoy the Demon Slayer archetype. Did you go with Close to the Heavens for the summons? I consider Instrument of the Least to be better of the similar two similar powers, but haven't played around. Um, I like Close to the Heavens just because... Like, that's really it. Like, the summon's nice, the Summon Spirit Paladin. That's pretty cool. Um... But also, I can heal allies with this, too. I think people forget about that part. Whereas Azada just gives them extra damage, if my memory serves. The uh, Instrument of Freedom one. So I hate that enemies get Phantasmal Web here, because we won't get it until like another level or two. And Phantasmal Web is pretty handy. All right, now this next fight sucks because there's no good way to walk into the room. So there's a boss, there's like a little mini boss right through here, and we want the items he drops. But there's no like good way to approach this dude. He has okay, like he has a really high fortitude, which means we're not gonna try to phantasmal killer him. But 
I was able to slumber him one time, so I think we're going to open the fight with trying to slumber him. Because if we can do that, this will be much easier. Yes! Okay, now we can move everybody in. After we pull them out of stealth. Now we're just going to turn off turn base and see if we can't just obliterate this dude while he sleeps. He likes to buff himself, but with him slum- oh wow, we crit him for 84 with our guy. So yeah, he didn't even get a chance to do that. Like, I, I, you could use coup de gras, but I don't know. I just, like, I prefer actually hitting them. Um, but, yeah, while they're down like that, you can use the coup de gras ability, technically. All right, belt of physical might. Uh, we'll give that to Sila. And pass the constitution belt on to a animal companion. And then we'll loot the kitchen, which... One of these guys has a, a robe, yeah. Alchemist shirt. Plus three against acid. Which we... We'll just put on, because it goes in a shirt slot, and this guy isn't using one, so... Not that it does us any good, really, because it's kind of whatever, but, you know, it's better than nothing. Carvalier says, blind on crits, my new favorite tactic. Yeah, the uh, the blinding critical feat, that's pretty sweet. That's a good one. I enjoy it anyway. All right, so now that we have all three keys, we've cleared basically the whole city. Now we head back up to like the top tier of the, the fort, and we go to the back entrance where we can open the gate to the courtyard without doing the gauntlet event. So by killing those three dretches, the one in the temple, the one in the prison, and the one in the inn where we just were, we can get three keys that open up a door right here. And there's a switch inside and a bunch of incubi. And if you hit the switch, it opens the courtyard door right here, which keeps you from having to fight a big event. There's like a big gauntlet event if you don't do this. And from doing this, we only have to kill, I think it's a retriever, and that's it. How many times have I gone through this game? Uh, quite a few. Alright, so... The problem is, I don't have anybody at all to undo these traps, because we don't have Camellia with us, and there's two of them. And... As much as I... It pains me to do it. What I always do in those situations is just run the horse over it. There's one more up here somewhere, but now that that's done, we'll heal the horse. It's important that nobody shows Pete of this footage, probably. Uh, <laughs> and we'll heal up our animal companion separately real quick. And then... Alright, so there's that. That's going to bring us into combat. Um, We'll keep turn based off for a second, but there is another trap over here somewhere. All right, we're gonna turn on turn base before our trap or uh, our horse gets completely annihilated here. Come on, camera's doing that weird thing. Okay, so we'll take our step, which is all he's gonna be able to do. Take him out of stealth, and then I potentially, yeah. No, no, it wouldn't let me give him his turn for some reason. We'll move him up. When do I this? Have Ninio cast haste. Or Smilodon 
if you can get a I can charge all the way to that guy, but I feel like I might hit that second trap up here if I do that. But nothing ventured, nothing gained. Let's see what happens. Oh, right in front of the trap. Nice. Okay. And Regil can charge to that guy. Okay, and then it's our turn again. So, because they're all clustered up like that, Burning Arc should get a ton of value. Nice. And then, Sela can charge that guy, but we're going to smite evil him first. And then now, now that she actually used smite evil, for some reason I can't charge him, even though that was it didn't take up an action because that's a swift. But okay. For some reason, it's trying to tell me that my... Because like that just means I can only take my five-foot step. So for some reason, me using Smite Evil counted as my action for the turn. Even though it's a swift action. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's easy to miss that key thing. Um, a couple of the demons talk about it. And you kind of just have to figure it out unless unless you know. Winduog just killed like four of those succubi. Jeez. Because she got her four hits and then her um, cleaving shot triggered, which killed more. This is this place right here is like an amazing place to have a demon slayer. They just do so much damage with a bow. Okay. Yeah, they're all pretty close to dead, but that one's now dead. That one died, and there we go. Yeah, I'm mostly skipping the cutscenes just because, like, I have streamed this part of the game like a million times. But we only need one person to walk over here and hit the switch. Because that's the... I'm glad the Crusaders and the Hell Knights didn't trigger that trap. I wasn't expecting them to follow me. Okay. So there's the door open. Yeah, Windu, Windu does really good with that uh, Demon Slayer archetype. I mean, honestly, that's just a really strong archetype for this particular adventure path anyway. Just because, like, you know, most of what you're fighting is demons. But, nonetheless, very strong. Okay, so you can actually use Close to Heavens to heal people as well if you target, at, uh, target allies. So, we just healed them for 41 with that ability, even though our character is a kineticist. Oh, it's Death Door. I saw the, the eye thing. I was like, I don't remember her getting blinded, and then I forgot she had Death Door. Okay. So what we got to do now is kill a retriever that's going to spawn as soon as we walk up the stairs a little bit. And then we have to fight the Baylor, But the Baylor isn't very difficult. Is he... Actually, you know what? I don't know if that retriever is going to spawn because we one-shot that guy. Normally, when you walk towards the door, that guy engages, and engaging him is what triggers the retriever to, like, crawl over the wall. But we one-shot him, so I don't know if it had a chance to spawn the retriever. <laughs> That's really funny to me. Okay. So, the fight with the Baylor, the easiest thing to do is to just not fight it. So this fight is on a timer. It doesn't matter how much damage you actually do to this thing. You can actually take it down to zero and the fight still won't end. Because it's on a timer, you can just kind of um, 
wait for it to pass. Yeah, Luna Rea, that's what, kind of what I was saying, where I think the uh, entering the combat with him is what spawns the Retrievers. And, but we one-shot him earlier with Phantasmal Killer, so they just never spawned. And Disco, we are on normal, as per the competition rules. Now, for this fight, we'll target the Babaos with our ranged attacks, but other than that, we're going to stay back, because he's going to cast Firestorm here in a second which we do not want to get caught up in. And then after, I think it's like two turns, like two total, like full turns or whatever, um, they pause the fight to have Greybor come attack him, which is what actually ends the fight. Okay. We did 45, but the camera's going to be all weird because we're under this, so it's going to keep popping us over that. Ember's not going to die, trust me. See if we can't get a ranged attack off on him, since he's basically dead. There's that Babao. Ninium, pass. Crusader, there's Elon. Okay. And he always... The Baylor always targets him with that Dominate. Try to extend it range to the bow. Get 39 to it. Leaving our melee characters right there. We'll move up and hit him with our uh, smile it on them. And we'll move him back if we can. Ember. We'll try to slumber him so he doesn't kill everybody. And he failed it, so he's down. Ninio, and then... There's the Firestorm. Still hit a couple of those guys. Alright. Up. Not once he's firestormed, you can move up a little more safely. You don't want to get the hit from that firestorm. That sucks. Okay. Move Wendy up. See you about right there. Fight should actually end pretty soon. It's usually not about how much damage you actually do to the thing. Him getting low HP triggered. Um, no, no. I've I've had Graybor show up when he's got like three quarters of his health still. turn, but he can't do anything. Baylor didn't do anything. Move the horse all the way up. I got a ton of movement that. All right, now we're just going to attack because we can. Oh, he attacked... <laughs> the Crusader attacked Elon, and for a second I thought he had dominated the Crusader too, and I maybe missed it or something. Okay. Maybe I can charge up there, but I'll go ahead and move around. He has Smite Chaos, which will stack with Smite Evil from Sela. Which should drop his AC to a point where we can actually hit him a few times. This is just normal for the competition. Oh, 
Okay. After this fight actually ends, you get a chance to rest and clear any death door conditions from yourself, so that's nice. There it is. Yeah, like I said, that fight, it's, it's just a timer. You don't actually have to deal with him. You just have to wait until Gravor shows up. Even if you take him down to zero hit points, the fight will not end. He won't die. Now they give you a, the opportunity to talk to Will, sir. Sell a bunch of junk. Sell our monk weapon. Sell that crossbow. We might give that to Regil. I don't know if that's better than what he has or not. Axe plus one. Hand axe plus one. We'll keep... I don't think we have anybody that's going to use a dueling sword, but that's a cool one. We can sell all these scimitars. Radiance will be upgrading here shortly. And sell the half plate. We'll keep that. Sell the storyteller's ring. Basic cloak. Basic clothes. Okay. And then. I don't think he really has anything we want at the moment. Some scrolls we don't really need. I saw that Unfair had some enemies overbuffed by accident on Unfair. Has been fixed. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what enemies they're referring to, but honestly, everything on Unfair is a nightmare. But we are just on normal ourselves here, so everybody sees it. Um, now, you can talk to Greybore. When we rest here, when we rest right here, it should actually clear her death's door. I mean... He tells us about that. I do think we still have to take Regil with us into the Citadel, though. I don't think there's any way to change our party out here. But you can clear Death's door right here. Or at least it usually works. I know on uh, other playthroughs I've done, resting at that particular spot would clear Death's door. Yeah, there it is. It's going. here okay almost done with x3 Two rather, not actually. Okay. All right, then we get a debuff as soon as we step in a little ways here. I see something over there. Then, unfortunately. We're just going to have to eat that trap. We don't have anybody to disarm that. I mean, there's no way around that one. So, if we can do it, yeah, there's the, the debuff. And then if we can trigger this trap without aggroing the enemies. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that was just a slow trap, but I think it already cleared because it passed the... Uh, now, did I get... Where did I get wisdom damage? We'll just use a restoration scroll real quick. Okay. Now everybody. Stealth. I do what I must. I am your judge. And soon there is your executioner. I was hoping I'd be able to reach that archer before he got to do anything, but we were not that lucky. 
go back to the votary first. I think I should be able to extend it range now. A little bit out. Can I? Got to turn the inheritor on because we move locations once we get a s chance here. Why is it saying that one? She should have more than enough. Oh, she's just barely out of range to hit anything. Probably I can slumber potentially. Yeah, he made it save. And they like to buff. What are? They have low saves. We could probably Phantasmal kill her, but we're going to save it because there's a couple enemies later I'd like to use Phantasmal on that I know are weak to it. I don't want to have to rest a million times. What does Shroud of Water do? It gives you extra AC. For If you chose the water element as a kineticist, it gives you extra AC. How do I get the Inheritor buff? You have to make the Covenant of the Inheritor which you can find in Act 1. You can have the Storyteller um, make it for you before he takes off for Act 2. Like, right when you get to Act 2, you can talk to the Storyteller, and he can make it for you, like, right there. You can still get it afterwards if you found the item, but you'll have to wait until Act 3 if you don't get it right at the start of Act 2. down here, grab all the loot. Oh, well, all the loot we can carry. I'm gone. And we meet Yaniel, supposedly. We will free her. Can have a conversation. That's a tough athletics check, but there is a unique item there. Now we failed it. I'm not going to do it again then. Okay, and then there's a trap like right out here, I know. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's like literally that square. Make me take a full move. I should still be able to take a standard action there. That's frustrating. Uh, yeah, we'll move her in. Move our Smilodon all the way in. Ember will have step out and we use Scorching Ray. Definitely not gonna be able to hit that guy. Here and then All right, we're going to take the burn from this. Now that switched over to Ninio. That was weird. Okay, and then we'll just. Magic missiles that guy. Oh, we're not gonna be able to reach him, that sucks. There's the archer. We're gonna have to kill him if we can. I'll rip you apart. Just in range. And he's almost dead. There's another Babao that was in stealth. There's 
two more. Kneel before me. The light take you. Okay, and then I don't want even more by any means. I think we have four. No, we only have two. Did I forget to? That's weird. Okay, we're gonna hit him. Oh no, we triggered the trap. Did kill that archer though, so that should be fine. That's just a uh, stinking cloud, so it just causes a few losses a turn, but we pretty much already won, so. Nice. Alright, now we'll just have to wait for that trap to fade and everyone to move out of it. We do it my way. And we'll head in the opposite direction because that's There's locked. Here. Oh, why am I? Oh, the trap. Nope. Don't try to unlock it, you idiot. And then that's a little bit of misdirection. They try to show you where the Sword of Valor supposedly is. Which we might have a little trouble in that room, truthfully. Oh, gotta wait for the cloud to dissipate. What staff is that? I must have missed it. Um. Minio has uh, oh. yes, what? the Blaze of Disaster from Lost Chapel. Pass honorable judgment onto Regil. And as soon as. I think we're just gonna go ahead and move Sue. Yeah, that, there it goes. Finally started to fade. Well, that's taking a hot minute. Okay. Can't open that because it's locked. Can get through here though. There's a Minotaur out here. Or at least there will be. There's also a trap around here somewhere. There it is. Okay, there's the Minotaur. Anything new? I think I got a pretty good shot. Yeah, I got a decent shot at Phantasmal. We'll try to. Now you're making mystery of ourselves. Nah. Yeah. Yes. Instant dead. Now we have a. I don't think we can get that at all, actually. Yeah. That's unfortunate because that's where we could have cleared the buff at. But. Or the debuff, rather. We'll run over the trap. Took a bunch of damage to our horse. And. You're a good person. I like you. We'll heal the rest with all these potions we've got laying around. Okay. Now, this part might go terribly, but we're going to try to fight the vampire down here. Because he drops a rape here. That'll deal extra damage. I think. No, that might be. He drops a, a rape here that we don't want, basically. Now, um. Phantasmal Killer is pretty great sometimes. It basically just depends on whether or not you can get the attack off. Like, in theory, I could uh, Phantasmal Killer him, actually. Like, because the DC, like, it'd be a very small chance. I'd have a very small chance of actually doing it, because he'd have to roll a 7 on his will save. But I think he's immune to mind affecting anyway, so never mind. It would not actually work on him. I always forget he's undead. Okay, uh, uh right. mirror image. Cast this placement on Sila. Turn based on. Cast face real quick. Cast him. Start the fight with a gather power. 
blast. If you're moving the camera when the turns switch, and I'm moving the camera all the time myself, it'll do that weird little thing where it, uh, the camera just starts like freely moving around. Nice. So from where we surprised him, he's almost dead already. If we get a couple more hits, I think we might actually get him. We don't have the range to hit him with anything from here, though. I'm gonna test, uh, Protective luck on Sila. Keep her up. I think I have. Yeah, I didn't have the range on that one either. Actually, I turned point blank off. Not yet. Yeah, still missed though. Okay. Turn stealth off and then run to hit that guy. Now, there's a bunch of spawn that just joined the battle here as well. What's going on, Mel? Uh, so, smite evil. Walk all the way up. There's a lawful evil, so hitting them with chaotic wouldn't do us any good. Um, can't charge. We've got more than enough up there. There's just three more spawn in here. I think on normal they don't cast dominate on. On core difficulty, every single monster in this room can cast Dominate. Which is incredibly annoying. He's not immune to magic missiles, is he? No. Nice. That was a good hit from Ninio, actually. Okay, yeah, he can cast Dominate. But he's about to die, so... On core difficulty, everything in the room can cast Dominate, not just him. Like, all these spawns over here can cast it, too. Which, on normal, I don't think they do. Yeah. Alright, Burning Arc, because they're all right next to each other. They do it on normal? I didn't see him cast it there. Um, this one's mine. Okay, and then Slumber. Where is he? There he is. We're going to try to slumber our main because uh, he got dominated and I don't want him hitting anything because if he hits something, it's really going to hurt. Beg me to there we go. And now we're still in combat because our guy is dominated. How long is left on that? One minute. Hold on, okay. Tell everybody to hold position so they don't try to attack him. Oops. Turn off inspect. And then we're gonna turn off turn based. Run everybody over here so they don't hit him. Okay, now he's back. Didn't want us to wait there for a minute, but also didn't want him to die. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, the, one of the nice things about the Dominate spells, though, is that your own characters usually don't have a super high defense in terms of, like, will saves and stuff. I mean, they can, of course, but most of the time they don't. And if they don't, all you've got to do is cast Slumber on them, and that'll pretty much take it. Why Windwog over land? Because I don't like land. Okay. 
we found... Oh, trap. Forgot that was in there. Alright, then we take our horse. Phantasmal Killer tried to use it against us. Alright, now we can kill the vampire. Get some XP and loot, which gives us Tender Touch. Which, uh, honestly, we don't really need, but nonetheless, loot. Can't open the chest, though. Poor sacrificial horse. Yeah, basically. We forgot to bring Camellia, so uh, our horse is going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting here. Okay, and then there should be demons at the bottom of this. Oh, hey, we leveled up. Didn't even notice. There's somebody mowing their lawn, like, right next to my house. So if you guys hear that, I'm sorry. Okay. Blood kineticist. Three. For our feet, we do not want snapshot. Where is... Do I not get... I thought I got improved critical around this time. Ah, not yet. Not quite. Uh, cha -cha -cha. Why not take Aru? She has high trickery. Because we're not using Aru. No particular reason. I'm also not concerned about it. Like, you don't get that much from having trickery around here. The main thing they could have done is um, use the, like, unlock the traps and stuff to get them disarmed. But beyond that, it's not a big deal. Uh, which, honestly, we just forgot to swap out um, Regil for somebody that was not Camellia, because these things happen. But that's pretty much the only reason, really. As you can see, it's not really slowing us down at all, though. We might just take combat mobility, just to make us a little more maneuverable. Because we don't get improved com- well, actually. We'll take light armor focus, just give ourselves an extra AC. Since we, uh, we don't have the thing that we really want this level. It's time but that gave us the maximized metakinesis. We also gained uh, our gut wrenching infusion, which we won't use a ton, but we have it. Level up Regil. We're just taking the auto stuff with him. For Sila. We leveled her up first, so it says she can get Boon Companion, but we're not using that for her. Uh, she... I think she gave her toughness already. So, don't care about most of this. Uh, I think... There's an improved version of toughness you can get. I don't know that we can get that one either, to be honest. Hold on. Yeah. Maybe I'm thinking of greater. Either way. Uh, don't really want to take improved critical with her, but we might. Don't really see anything else super pressing, to be honest. Yeah, we'll just give her improved with the long sword then. Nothing super pressing to take with her. And then for her mercy, uh, we'll take... Actually, we'll take confused. Because if I'm exhausted, chances are I'm resting anyway. So. Right, and Winduog. Another point in Demon Slayer. For her feet... Yeah. 
all of these would be pretty good, to be honest. Um, thinking we're going to take probably clustered shots. And then we already picked up urban, so we're about to be fighting in abyss terrain a lot. So we'll go ahead and grab that for now. And then Ninio, Troll Savant, for her feet. She doesn't need point blank shot because we're not using any ray attacks, but normally you might want to pick that up. Uh, we already got Illusion for spell focus, I think. Yeah, we even got greater spell focus for that too. We might grab empowered meta magic actually. Well, actually, I don't think that would really affect too much for her, really. It would cast it higher, but I don't think that would really change much. Now yeah, we might pick Heightened for that, because Heightened actually will, like, update the, uh, the saving throw DCs and stuff. Yeah, Quicken's pretty cool too, Logan. But I think this only increases it by one, in which case Heighten might be the way to go. Yeah, I think we'll pick up Heighten. We might have to Sort that out later. Okay, yeah, here we go. We get Phantasmal Web and Constricting Coils. Real quick. Try to do this with each one as we go. She didn't get anything extra. We'll just give her another Challenge Evil. Ranger, she finally got her two spell slots, but we'll give her Bark Skin so she can buff herself and then she gets her level five. Phantasmal, or uh, Constricting Coils. We're not gonna use Heighten yet until we get more spell slots, at which point we might actually uh, Heighten something. Which, if my memory serves, you gotta do through this. Yeah. But we'll probably try to Heighten Phantasmal Killer so it's cast higher. Um, but we can't do that right now because we really don't have enough spell slots to do it. And then Ember. For her feet, I think we need spell focus, actually. I don't think we've picked it up yet. I think we went with penetration. Yeah, and do I have it for, yeah. So we want spell focus evocation. This doesn't matter a ton, so we're just going to pick up web. Um, level three. We'll pick up remove curse just in case anybody happens to get one. And then for level four, we can give her phantasmal killer too, but it's less effective because she's going to have a lower DC on it. So we're going to pick up critical wounds instead. First, we'll move up here. Web will put up there. Right, make sure everybody's buffed up here. I'm always ready. Okay, Death Ward. Yeah, we'll get Death Ward here in a bit. We don't need it just yet.
we're not at a point where like we'll need death ward but we don't need it yet don't get me wrong we'll probably grab it at level 10. okay and then here we have joran who's going to upgrade radiance for us this fight's actually a bit of a like this fight can be difficult on higher um difficulties because he has a ridiculous ac so get radiance upgraded And then he fights you basically no matter what. No time for debates. Gonna turn base this one. Yeah, so what is his I've never actually checked his AC on normal. 35. Yeah, it's still pretty high. Okay. Now luckily it's just him against you, so. He usually loses. This is a raid touch attack, so we're going to use this because we're more likely to hit him because his touch AC is only 11. And that is a touch attack, so. Does my kineticist have any energy blast? No. Um, you can't pick up an energy blast with a kineticist until like level 15, or a, a blood kineticist until level 15, largely. Um, but we do have closer to heavens, which is a. Um, Touch attack. Press the attack. And then we also have touch attacks through other people. Go, go. So he's definitely going to die, but it's a little hard to hit him with physical attacks. But he likes to buff himself for the first few rounds. So he's really not much of a threat. Ah, we missed. We rolled a one, and all we needed was a two, which is basically means we would have hit him on anything except a one. Hold on, guys. We gotta answer some text. Have you seen him cast heal on core? I've fought him on core. I've never seen him cast heal. Okay. Uh. Truthfully, I imagine Ember is probably going to be the one to kill him. Or get incredibly close one. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so now we have Radiance upgraded. Which is pretty close to her uh, Longsword plus two, actually. But it's Cold Iron. And the good aligned is actually from our... Um, Inheritor bonus, not because that is actually good aligned. There's a boss down there that we are absolutely not going to fight. We could probably do it, truth be told, because we have Spirit Paladin and Blight Maul, which is the boss down there, actually cannot kill um, the Spirit Paladin at all. Spirit Paladin is immune to every attack Blight Maul has. So it would be possible for us to kill Blight Maul, but I'm not going to risk it. All he has is some amulet that's not worth that much. Oh. Elf. Come on, give me the kill. Missed it. Crap. He made his saves that time. But, oh well. Yeah, there's the dice from Summoner, but we don't really want those either. Like, it's definitely possible for me to kill him with the setup I have, especially just because we're on normal, but I'd rather not risk it, because if I get unlucky, that would just be game over.
you're doing any of the other ones, Playful Darkness, you can go back for, so it's not as hard and if you do it at level 16 or something. Um, potentially, we uh, we might do one or two here and there, but for the most part, I'm going to skip the optional ones just because I think it's more trouble than it's worth. Especially on a mode like this. Really gonna have to give this horse a medal or something. <laughs> can you pull those modified blast abilities like extend to the hot bar or they stuck? You can pull them to the, the hot bar, I just don't. <laughs> yeah, the uh the woman who actually summons Blight Maw. You can fight her as well if you interrupt the ritual, and she casts Transform, so she has a ridiculous AC, but she has a lot of other weaknesses. Now, we can't just get the lock, uh, the uh, key for this lock, so we're going to have to get it from the enemies over here. So we're going to try to undo some of these traps first. See if we can get lucky. This experiment has gone awry. How much? What, is, what am I failing that by? So, I have 13. So, I can pass that. I'm just going to have to heal her until we do. And before anybody mentions it, no, I can't save Scummit because that is against the rules. There we go. So, there's those traps done. What does the Blood Kineticist do? You get a bunch of unique infusions, like bleed and stuff, which are fun. Minus two charisma. Oh, the will save. Easy, easy, easy. Alright. So, that's what we have our scrolls for. And then, who else? Somebody else took charisma damage, but I don't... Oh, it must have been a pet. I don't really care about them. Oh, yeah, I forgot to level them up. I always forget to level my pets up. Alright, what are you doing? Power attack, blind fight, um... Bulwark. Probably go toughness next. For the horse, we're just trying to make it very hard to kill. The Smilodon, we're focusing on damage. Oh, and I already got toughness. That was the level one, yeah. Actually, it just got medium barding, so we might go ahead and just pick up the heavy barding. Yeah. Now that I think about it. Two, six, four. Can't really go wrong. I think these are basically the same. Yeah. We'll give it that one, though. So there's some more armor class for it. Dodge. Yeah, we'll get dodge eventually. Um, I just forgot I could get the barding points for uh, for free basically that turn. Oops. Hit back. Okay, for your feet. We can't get dreadful uh dreadful carnage for a little bit, so we can pick up some other stuff for him. Cleave is cool, but it requires us to make a full attack and we don't want to make a single attack per turn. But We might just give it dodge. Then again, we could do hammer the gap as well. Because it gets like five attacks, so it actually gets quite a bit of benefit from hammer the gap. Yeah, I think we're going to do it. Can you ride the centipede as a mount? I don't think so. How do you even spawn Blight Maw? Uh, you have to not kill the cultist first. All right, there we go. There's the traps undone. So now all we got to do is fight the enemies for the key. Which is still a little bit of a tough fight because they summon in stuff behind you. But since we undid the traps, we won't be getting hit with, like, fatigue and everything at the same time. 
Okay, so we're gonna try to phantasmal that. Ooh, we might actually. I don't know. The the Minotaur would be better if we can make it happen. Ah, took a bunch of damage, but we didn't get the fortitude save. Okay, and then it's gonna charge. Oh no, can I not? Oh, it's because I'm on the steps, I bet. Like, oh no. If I turn stealth on, it will let me do it. Sweet. Yes. Alright, it's almost dead already. Stuff will spawn in behind us, or at least it should. I don't know if it only does that because we have the traps or not, but I know normally stuff will spawn in behind you. Alright, we're gonna have her use Phantasmal no. Killer again. Man, they're just making their saves this time. That guy had low low bonus. Oh, he just barely made his save too. That sucks. Alright. Oh, for some reason I thought I had the... Uh, didn't realize I was looking at my main character. I was like, that's not the ability I thought it was. Okay, we're gonna try to kill that evoker. Eh, close. Once we hit, I think it's... I think like level 11, you get more burn reduction and we can turn on Empower again without taking on a bunch of extra burn. Okay, so... We got Redril. We'll just have him attack the Votary there. Alright, that was weird. And she did damage, so she definitely attacked. It just the camera was really weird there. Okay, and then have you charged the evoker? Oh wow. Holy crap. I didn't think our horse had it in him. Do Kineticists drop off at high level? The one attack seems like it'll be weak later as the damage really high. Um, it really depends on how you build them. The damage can be upwards of like three, 400 if you're building it properly. Okay, and then can she, if she can slumber that archer, we'll be in good shape. Oh my God, they keep making their will saves. And they have terrible modifiers. There's the Minotaur. And then I think because we disabled the trap, it actually didn't spawn the extra enemies. Because like if those traps go off, enemies spawn in like here, even on normal. But I think we, by disarming the trap, I think we uh, bypassed that. Okay, and then one of these guys should have the key. Yeah. Oh no, you know what? I think I know. If we interact with this sort of valor, supposedly, that's what actually activates the extra enemies, which activates the trap. Okay. But we have the key, and we know that's fake, so. It should just, yeah, okay. Sometimes it gives you the lockpick menu, even if you have the key. Hold on. I know for a fact there's a, a trap in here. There it is. Okay, Sheila. Hit everybody with an AoE heal and then. I believe there's two oh, Minotaurs here. No nice, that's a pretty solid crit. Charge didn't work, that's annoying. Um, hit him with Slumber, nice. Nah, we missed. That sucks. I hate when you only need like a really low roll and you still manage to miss.
Okay, so we're almost to a bit of a gauntlet here in this. We're going to have to fight a bunch of ghouls, and then a Nabasu springs in. So, do we have any scrolls that could help us prepare for that? Monarch is a very important horse, that's true. He's doing a lot of work. <laughs> Ringer necklace. Uh, sorry, just catching up with chat for a second. I thought they spawned. Yeah, yeah, they spawn when they, they click the banner. I, I remembered at the end there. Yeah, this, this room honestly isn't that bad, all things considered. You just have to be ready for the Nabasu. The ghouls are nothing, but the Nabasu at the end can really cause you some problems. And we have restoration when it inevitably gives some of us negative levels. We have Create Pit. Uh, this is like one of the last of a couple fights I need to do before I can rest because we need the Sword of Valor to clear this Whispers of Madness and then we can rest. But we need to be a little more cautious. Um, Nothing to really buff us spell-wise, honestly. Um, what do we have? She got three out of five. Okay, we might cast Volcanic Storm on one part of the room. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm pretty sure we'll be okay, but we're going to have to I do what I must. turn base this just in case. How come I didn't use the Triceratops pet? Because uh, it's like four levels lower than your guys, and we don't really need it because we've already got like three pets here. Okay, so there's that. Nice. Truth be told, I think Monarch the Horse is the MVP of this dungeon run. Here we got Regil. Is not an option. If he had made his attacks, he probably would have done pretty good there. He mostly killed that thing, but he missed like three of his four. Alright, so. We're gonna cast Volcanic Storm. Like over here. And then we're gonna stay away from it. Because that's where a lot of them spawn. Oh, wow, she actually had the range on that guy. I didn't think she would. Okay, and then... She's gonna haste everybody, because she can still do that. He's running low on spell slots, though, so we need to hurry up and make it to the Sword of Valor so I can actually rest. This sh like, <laughs> Look at his head. Um, this should be the worst of it, though, honestly. Um, once we get this fight done, we should be okay. Actually, you know what? I think we're going to hit him. There's a lot of the ghouls, but they all have very low health, so they're not that intimidating, all things considered. No, that, that, ah, I shouldn't have. Yeah, he's immune to that. Why did I do that? 
I always forget slumber is a mind affecting thing too. Okay, Sila. She can move there. Oh, there's the Nabasu. I think you only got Ninio with negative levels though, that's not bad. Okay, if we get really lucky, we might be able to kill this Nabasu very quickly. Okay, and then our Smilodon is going to be able to charge it. He's going to take some attacks of opportunity, but Pounce will activate and he'll get like five attacks. We might be able to kill the Nabasu like immediately. Yes, okay, sweet. All right, so that is the worst of it. Now we just have to finish off all the ghouls. We're going to use her fireball. That's why I like that Blaze of Disaster staff, because then she can use fireball even if she doesn't uh, have like a lot of the offensive support stuff I usually give her. Now we're gonna try to kill. Can I reach? I'm gonna have him focus on the Hunts Masters because they can deal a lot more damage than the regular ones. Wow, I got like maybe one hit HP away from just killing that guy. That's frustrating. Yeah, yeah, so that's all of our animal companions and everything are really helping us out here. And we're actually about to get one more. And those, <laughs> these ghouls want to hit Sila so bad, and not one of them, I think, is actually connected. This one's mine. Regil's over here doing some work, too, for once. He's missed most of his uh, hits this round, or uh, this like, stretch of game here. Okay, so... Honestly, we don't really need to do much with her... I think we'll just spam a sonic scream just because uh, don't really have too much to do with her. I don't want her wasting cure spells on this stuff. Creeper. Okay, so we're going to attack that one. Nice. All right, I think this is the last of the ghouls here. We should be basically done. And then Windu's about to mess a lot of them up. Yeah. Ah, she missed her last attack. Okay, and then... Nice. I think we got five of them left. Alright, we're gonna save that magic missile just in case, and then just cantrip attack. Nice. We crit him for 124 with our kineticist. Hold on, guys. Reading some stuff real quick. gotta do is kill these guys. Walk Regal over there. Nice. There we go. And last but not least, we just gotta hit that guy one. Wow, does she have the range on that? Oh, that's right. I have point blank off. That's why. Okay, so there's that sorted out, which I was a little concerned about because I was a little worried about the Nabasu. I was like, if we can't kill that thing quickly, it's going to cause problems. There are some loot in the chests over there. 
I think one of them's locked, but it's just a tower shield and we don't need it, so it's whatever. And then we run into Yaniel, who kills a rock and then opens the way. And then we find ourselves in the little puzzle room. Okay, now normally I like to cheese this, but because we're on Last is Lanti, we are absolutely not going to do that. Because sometimes when I cheese it, it goes wrong, and I reload it a couple of times, but that's not going to get it here. How did Ninio get over there? That was weird. Like, Ninio, like, dropped off the side over there. Okay, loot. All right, uh, I hate this puzzle. I usually just kind of spam until I figure it out. can never remember which one moves what. Most of the time when I solve this, it's purely by accident. Be honest. There we go. Oh, red friend donated five dollars. Said I've learned so much from you, Mortismal. Thanks for doing this. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. That's very kind of you. All right. So now we got to fight some shadow demons. Take our five foot step back. How'd that guy. How did he take so much damage to his health already? What hit him? Oh, just from normal? What? Oh, he, she got attacked of opportunity by Sila. Okay, I understand what's happening now. I was like, how did that demon take a hit? Okay. So. Why am I extending blasting that? Uh, Alright, I'm gonna turn bleed on. Well, actually, if I can turn bleed on, can I turn. No, empowered's gonna cost me burn, but I can use bleed. Don't hold back. Oh, wow. I did not expect that to die. I mean, I'm not complaining, but I didn't figure that would do it. Okay, and then, what are these? They are not immune to mind affecting. He's got better saves, though. In theory, I can slumber this thing. Ah, I missed the save. All right, where is, okay, there's our Smilodon. He's kind of glitched into the chest there. All right, so we're gonna have him come over here, attack you, Regil, my chaos. Kneel before me. Oh wow, Regil one-shot that thing. Those things must not have that much health. I thought they would have more than that. Uh, Drowsy Plays says I want to join the channel. Do you only have a 99 subscription? Nothing higher. Uh, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want like people to charge it. Like I don't want to charge people a lot for subscriptions. I don't like seeing like YouTubers and stuff charge like 15 dollars for that. Like really, all it is is your name in the credits. And while it certainly does help the channel, and I appreciate it. I don't really want to, I don't want people spending a lot of money on that kind of thing. So I have the dollar one. Um, and then Red Friend actually joined. So thank you very much again for that. But that's why it's only a dollar. I really don't want people spending a lot of money on it, but people ask to do it. So that's why it's there to begin with. Okay, so can we charge? Oh, we can charge. This might be it for this guy because he does not have a high AC. Oh, he does have a lot of health, though, compared to the other ones. All right, and then... Yeah, I'm assuming he's evil, right? Yeah, evil outsider. Smite evil. Have Sila step up. Windu should do a ton of damage to this guy. 
Can she hit him from? Yeah, she still gets her full attack if I turn point blank on. So. Ah, she missed her last attack. All right, Ninio. We're just gonna have Ninio cantrip attack. I don't want to waste her spell slots. Drowsy plays also joined as a member. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Make it two dollars slow. <laughs> Oh no, it cast, uh, what did it cast? What is that? That is Thinking Cloud, probably. Okay, that's not too big of a deal, though. Strike. All right, he's almost dead. Nice. He's not immune to Sonic, is he? This will be hilarious if that kills him. Okay, yeah, yeah, we failed to overcome spell resistance. That sucked. Got a terrible roll. Okay, so this might be it. Oh my god, we keep missing rolls. Just die. This one's mine. There it is. Jeez. Okay. And then as soon as we grab the Sword of Valor, we're going to get attacked again by yet another Nabasu. Well, I think there's a Nabasu that comes in the room with the other ones. Drowsy plays donated ten dollars. Says I'll just give you a bit more than again. Thank you. That's very generous of you, man. You got to do that. All right. So we can loot. If you can pick that, you can find a really cool spear in here. It's like uh, Bane of Evil Outsider plus two or something like that. But we don't have anybody that can pick the lock. Plus, nobody uses spears. So as soon as we pick that up we're gonna get attacked and outside of Ninio not having any spells we're in a good way I mean she has haste which is probably the most important one so we'll be fine but here we go so we pick up the sword of valor we get attacked Thomas Edgerson says if you are able to say how much of these donations actually go to you uh, it's like 70% if my memory serves um, the like the actual donations donations quite a bit of it. I get most of that actually um, the the channel membership I think it's like 70 percent um, yeah you don't want to <laughs> yeah uh, yeah as far as I know I get pretty much everything from the actual donations um, I think they take like 10 or 20 percent I'd have to look it up offhand I don't remember exactly how much it is I know the donation the uh, the memberships actually is like uh, I get 70 and they get 30. Which is another reason why I don't uh, have the crazy high memberships. Ink of the Dragon says, Overwhelmed by character building, starting with the playthrough with auto level up to learn, then hope to play again with auto level off. You think that's a good way to learn the game? Um, so the replay fatigue part of it, sure. Like, if you only want to play through it once, that might be an issue. But in terms of playing through the game and seeing what they auto build for the characters, I think that's a decent way to start, yeah. Okay. So we gotta kill the votary, the cultist, and then like next round a Nabasu summons in like right there if I remember, and then I believe, I don't know if we can see him, but there's usually like a third guy right there. Okay, I can't, can I turn point blank off? Okay, sweet. Alright, so we're gonna try to kill that guy, because his rage is gonna leave him with less AC. Ninio's gonna open up with haste. Guides also work. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Pro says you could also just watch some of Mort's guides on character builds. Hashtag not sponsored. Yeah, so honestly, like, I make more than enough just through my videos and my guides and stuff. I'm not really super worried about people donating. Like, it's not going to make or break me. It's certainly very kind of people to do so, but I make more than enough off ad revenue myself. Uh, okay, so that's all for Ninio. We're going to have Reginald just charge in. Cultist opens up with Divine Power. God. I have a bad habit of moving the camera as the turns change, and if you do that, the camera starts, like, free-floating. Okay, so... Diva will just move her in. Don't want to do that, so we'll do 
Can we reach him with the regular one? Yeah. You son of run! We have our bleed infusion on. So things are costing us a little more burn, which is one of the reasons I like to play that kind of thing by ear. Can we potentially slumber that guy? Nice. Okay. And there's the Nabasu. Can I charge it? Not quite. I can get to it, but I can't actually charge it. It's actually not even available as an enemy yet. That's how, see, how it's just moving through and it's not on the bar. Sometimes when things summon in, that's how they come in. We can attack this votary though, which actually we should be able to attack that votary. Yeah, which will kill him, and then now the Nabasu should be ready. Okay. Beg me to stop. It takes a second for that Nabasu to be like available to attack. There it is. Okay, so. Hmm. It's definitely going to die pretty quick, but it's going to get an attack off, and I wish I could I potentially... Yeah, because we're out. Normally what I'd do is Phantasmal Killer it if the option was available, because it has fairly low saves, but um, I don't have anything that I could really stop it from attacking with, and Regil will do some damage, but not enough. So I guess we're going to this magic missile. Now, Regil's going to step up and attack this thing. Oh, okay. I really undersold Regil. My bad. He took care of that. No problems. Wow, that thing had, like, no armor class. That had 11 for an armor class? We do it my way. I really didn't think Regil was going to be able to pull that off. Okay. Oh, hold on. There's a trap in this room. I know for a fact there is. Our horse is going to keep doing what it does best. Hey, it barely even took any damage from that one. Yeah, like, Rejo wasn't doing much, like, towards the beginning, but towards the end, he's really started to clear some people out. Okay. So we're going to go up. Which I think we can save, or uh, rest, rather, like, right it after this. I can imagine a job posting for that horse position. Yeah, that, <laughs> that horse, like, honestly, I think Monarch, our horse, has done more than anybody. Okay, guys, we're choosing our mythic path. It's time. We're going Azada, so we already know what we're doing, but still. I'll let the cutscene play, because I actually like this one a lot. Once we actually make our choice. But we're going Azada, so easy choice. For our mythic ability, we should have... Yeah, so we can use two substance infusions at once if we wanted to. Um, you know what? Honestly, I don't even really want that that much. Like, it's not bad, but we're never really going to be using two substance infusions because of the burn cost of doing that. Now what I could do is pick up Cleaving Shot because Kinetic Blast is actually considered a ranged weapon attack. Or it's, well, it's a ranged attack. I actually don't know if it's considered ranged weapon attack for this. And I can't redo it if it doesn't actually work. Because I can't reload and change anything, so... If that's wrong and that doesn't work like that, then I can't actually take anything else. And that does specifically say ranged weapon attack, not just attack, so hold on. Now is it just... 
fake the bigger they are. Yeah, I really, I, I don't want, yeah, exactly, it would be, I, I think it would be great if it worked, but I don't want to pick it up and it not work, because it does specifically say ranged weapon, and we're not technically using a ranged weapon, we're just making a ranged attack. And sometimes the feats are very specific about that kind of thing. Does Azada work well for Kineticist, or is it the same either way? Um, Azada works well because we can make use of most of the bonuses from it. Bigger they are, gives ranged attacks against large enemies. Yeah, but that also says uh, attack roll with ranged weapons, so I don't know if it's just a ranged attack or not. Last stand. Uh, I could potentially become la like I could grab last stand. That would make us very tanky if something happens to us, actually. Or, or am I that confident? Um, we could take Last Stand. Last Stand is like the safe option, if you will. For two rounds, we'd become immune to damage that would make us unconscious. And it is... So Last Stand is allowed by the rules. I'll double check, but... Yeah, all builds and mythics can be used. So there's nothing against the rules for doing last stand. Thomas Edgerton donated five dollars. That don't rely too much on the wording. It is rather inconsistent. I would love to see more videos going into the combinations of these interactions. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's it's definitely something worth looking up just to kind of see, even if the ones that say ranged weapon attack actually affect it or not. But truthfully, I think last stand's probably the safe bet. So I think that's what we're gonna go with. Um, inspirational leader, uh, your allies within 50 feet give a bonus equal to half your mythic rank plus one of their initiative. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't be terrible. Um, I think we're going to go last stand for this one right now. Just because we can. And then when I get a chance off camera, I might check whether or not cleaving shot works with kineticist. Because I could pick that up next time that we get a mythic ability. Because if I could, if cleaving shot works with the kinetic blast, that would be amazing. But for right now, we're gonna pick up last stand, and then none of these spells matter because we're not gonna be using them. But we get summon Mastodon, Song of Heroic Resolve, uh, Ivu, which is our third animal companion. Yeah, it's the safe choice. Um, and don't get me wrong. If you're in a situation where like everything has gone sideways, Last Stand isn't gonna save you. It's just a bit of a buffer between your main character dying unsuccess, like just out of the blue, as opposed to a full party wipe. Because if you have a full party wipe, you're still gonna die. All Last Stand is really gonna do for you is keep your main character from dying if a bunch of enemies decided that was who they needed to focus on. All right, and we place our banner. Then we have the thing with the relu. Oh, we have the flashback, that's right. Cutting through a lot of this, because I've seen it. And then Yaniel, of course, turns out to be actually a relu. Because a relu was pretending to be, sh pretending that she was Yaniel so she could judge you. Then she takes off. Let's prove their Last standby's exactly. time. Yeah, that's kind of my point. Like, if all of the enemies just go straight after your main guy, it can be super helpful. But if you have, like, a full party wipe, chances are you're probably still going down. Okay, so... Alright, Ivu is hilarious. Those two will die in a second when they try to teleport out. I'll hit you. And then... My just gotta kill this sense. guy who has basically no health left. Right. I don't want to We're about to rest, but I really still don't want to take the extra burn. Well, you know what? We're gonna do it. We're gonna turn that off and then move up and hit him. 
Because we're about to rest. We're going to get off the ramparts and then we're going to rest. Yeah, Ivu is really high value just because. So we're going to auto level up Regil, who also takes last stand. We're not going to be using him very much. Uh, Mythic 3 for Sila. We might go ahead and give her Unrelenting Assault. That wouldn't be bad. Could give her last stand. Mythical Beast. I, I could do Mythical Beast. It would make Monarch even hilariously stronger. And Monarch, I tell you what, Monarch did such a great job. We're going to get Mythic Beast just because. That's how well Monarch did in this dungeon. We decided to make it official. Monarch is a mythical beast. Okay. For Windua, we picked up Cleaving Shot, and then the next one I like personally is Distracting Shots, which every time we hit, they start taking penalty to AC. And then for Ninio, we're picking up Improved Abundant Casting. This is going to give her a ton of spell slots. And then for Ember... There's no specific thing that she needs, to be honest. Um... She only deals fire damage. Might give her boundless healing. Just to make it be reach. Enduring spells. Um. Uh, you could do Enduring Spells, but like most of our buffs, we don't really need to make them up to 24 hours anyway. Not from her anyway. As a healer and go Abundant Boundless. Yeah, I'm thinking... I'm thinking... Well, we already have a Spell Pen as a feat, so we already got that. Uh, but that's a feat, yeah. So I'm thinking either Boundless Healing or Abundant Casting. Because Abundant Casting, like it still gives you more spells per day for her, even though she's a uh, spontaneous caster. But it's only first, second, and third, which would apply to her Scorching Ray, which she uses a lot. I think we're gonna go Abundant Casting, just because it's gonna give her more uh, casts of Scorching Ray, because that's a third level spell. Okay, and then we really need to rest as soon as we get out of these ramparts. But first, we're going to handle everybody's spell slots real quick. Which I don't think... Really only Ninio, and she's spontaneous. So we need to move Ninios around, because she just got a bunch more. So, constricting. We could probably heighten Phantasmal Killer. Okay, yeah, so we could do that. And that would up the DC on it. So we'd cast it as a level 5. Yeah, I think we'll grab two heightened phantasmal killers. Wait, I should... Yeah, it's level 5, so I should be able to... Okay, there it is. I was like, why did it... It moved it over to the favorites menu for some reason. We're gonna grab two of those and one more phantasmal web. Okay. All right, that should be it for her. And then once she rests, oh yeah, we gotta put all of our other stuff in. Uh. We're gonna give her several more casts of Phantasmal just so we have it. And then I think I'm gonna give her 
Probably just two casts of stone skin just so she can buff herself if necessary in certain situations. And that should be it. And then uh, once we get, I think it's Hungry Pit is level four, I believe. Once we get that, we might swap that out. I make Ninio a haste. Yeah, yeah. So we have tons of haste spells like right there. So that's what mostly what she's doing. And then we'll give her another mirror image cast. And all right, so she should be good. Alright, now we just gotta. We're gonna turn turn based off and just clear these guys out. So, one of the best things about Ivu is the ridiculous amount that she can do. Yeah, it's a. Uh, Stone Skin is an opposition school for her, that's why it took up two spell slots. But alternatively. We have plenty of Phantasmal Killer, um, so it just takes two. That's why that instead of one, so um, that's why it took both slots when we did that. But we have plenty of Phantasmal Killer cast at this point, so we don't really need more. All right, and then where did our yeah there it is. Alright, I'm going to move the heightened one over here just so I know it's different. Okay. That should do it. So, once we go into the Citadel's main floor, it'll be a safe spot for us to rest. So we can safely rest right here. At least we should be able to once we move away from the door a little bit. Okay. So we don't want to rest in the dungeon dungeon because that uh, charisma check thing is still ticking. Uh, build for main character is a blood kineticist. Okay, so there is all of our spell slots. Now we can cast Scorching Ray so many times. Buff everybody up. So we're going to be attacked right through here, but only a couple of enemies, and I think... Now we are making a mystery of ourselves. I'm always open to ideas. Yeah, that is an impossibly low, so that'll be real easy. We should absolutely kill this guy. It'll be annoying if we don't, actually. Yeah. And there's a Minotaur. Oh, that guy spotted us. That was a good spot for him. Jeez. Okay. And I do. We'll have you run up. I'll rip you apart. When do hit him and turn on gathering power plus our bleed. And now we're gonna have to turn bleed off so we can extend it range without taking more burn. Oh, it still says I can't hit it for some reason. Do I have to move or something? No, it's not going to let me gather power. That's fine. I'll tell you what. We're going to take the burn on this so we can activate elemental overflow. And then, hold on. we got to move. we got a bunch of abilities on our bar from where we got all that. Mastodon. Sleep. Never going to use it. Where did our spirit paladin summon go? Weird. Okay. And I can probably just hit him with this then. Alright. Alright, that killed him. And then. If I'm not mistaken, there's still a Minotaur around here somewhere. Yeah, there he is. Alright, 
uh, he will get his turn skipped because we surprised him. And what are this guy's saves? Nine and ten. Might be able to do it. Can't reach him though. Well, yeah, because we're out of stealth too, so. Alright, we're gonna turn turn based off because there's no point in uh, micromanaging this. Why did you not do the room to turn off the insanity buff? I remember saves coming, but I can't remember how hard it is. Because we didn't have Camilla and the door to that room is locked, so I had to skip it. Does the dragon get bigger as it levels? Yeah, yeah. So as we get mythic ranks, uh, Ivu gets bigger. Okay, now we go up, and we are almost done claiming Dresden. We got one more fight, and then the fight with Staunton and Minago. Archer really tore into Regil. He lived, but literally with one HP. I do what I must. Okay. Uh. All right, so we should pretty much be good to go here. We're going to turn turn-based on, but now we just got to fight these three, I believe, and we'll be good to go. If he kills us, then so be it. Who cares about Mandev? You crop. Stop. Right now. Okay. Oh, we forgot to heal Redwell. Whoops. That's going to be a problem. Is not an option. Okay. Let's check out saves on these guys. 16. Hers are, of course, amazing. Nera's got the least, but her will score is still pretty high. So, I'm not going to try to slumber anybody. I think we're just going to Scorching Ray Staunton and try to take him out quickly. Because once we get him gone... They'll beg me to stop. Monago will run off. Is he... Yeah, he's neutral evil, so we can smite evil. Horse and their saves are too high for phantasmal. Will they're pretty high for constricting coils too? So I think with him being so close, we're just going to magic missile. There it is. I think he got Regil. No. My so there's Minago running off. Give me so I grow so tired of you. So this is to be Okay. So he heals up a little bit. So I don't remember how much, but Yeah, so should pretty much be able to kill him pretty quick. No match for me. And that killed the Babao, and then we just gotta kill or fight Nura. Yeah. And is she? Yeah, she's chaotic neutral, so can't really smite evil her. But 
We're gonna give it a channel positive energy real quick. I will only get some move action, so. There. What is her will save? It's like 14, 14 versus, 14 versus 23. We could try constricting coils. I don't know how much good it would do us. And then we can charge with our smilet on, or at least come up and attack with our smilet on. So we should be okay regardless. But we're going to try to constricting coils. Nah, she saved. Okay, and then Scorching Ray. Am I keeping Regal as a party member? No, no. We'll be switching back to Camilla pretty soon. don't think I don't have the yeah I don't have the range on extended um, I think we can hit yeah 31 and she uses inspire courage which doesn't really do much good but she does cast haste I'll rip you apart. is that is that total concealment no I think I want to pick up an improved precise shot with Winduog pretty soon, so she doesn't have such a problem hitting uh, concealed targets. Into the fray. Oh, it's going to be hilarious if Ivu's the one to kill her. No, I missed. Oh no, Ivu did it! Ivo's a murderer. Okay. And now we pick up all of Staunton's equipment. We give the Headband of Wisdom to Winduog, weirdly enough. But that's going to give her spell slots that we could really use. We're going to pick up Mass Cat's Grace uh, with... Uh, Ninio soon, so we're not going to get it individually here. I think at like level 10 or 11 you get it. Alright, and then we should be good. What was I looking at? Inventory. Dex and Constitution. We'll give that to our guy because we need to survive. I think everybody else pretty much We'll give it to uh, Ember so she has a slightly better chance on her ranged rolls. I think everybody's got health. We're about to get rid of Regil, so obviously not giving him anything. Natural armor, bark skin. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we get more AC from bark skin than we do the apothecary thing, so that's fine. Um, ring. We'll give her that AC ring just because we have it. I forget where I got it from, to be honest. And then... This is decent for her, of course, but yeah, I think giving this to Sela is probably the way to go. Doesn't give her a ton of extra AC, but it does have that cool effect. She doesn't make much use from the decks, though. Also, we're fatigued, which we need to sort out. And then our cloak. I think that's it. All right. So, we got Kalistra's blessing from invoking her name there. Loot. And wrap this up. Alright, now we're chaotic good here, so we're going to leave. We're going to let her go. Which, we, she'll come up again later, but I'm not really worried about it. Trying to play Azada a little bit here, and then... I don't remember if there... Yeah, there's a Sure in here. Turn, turn based off of that. And then... Does Dex pin from armor only affect AC? It's only AC. And, like, well, AC and the um, associated, like, stealth and stuff, I think. But I think that's the armor check penalty, not literally the, the dex to AC the bonus. Has managed to overthrow. 
All right, so there we go. There's Act 2 done. Probably, but we're swimming in gold. We're fine. All right, and we didn't bring the queen with us, so she's not here. And she gives us all of our quests for Act Two. Left Staunton's body burned. Then we finally are formally introduced to our dragon. Who tells us where to go for our Azada Mythic Pass. I think, yes, I think they rest everyone automatically there. And we're going to level up Camellia. Point blank shot. I don't know why it's suggesting point blank shot. We're definitely not getting that. We will grab toughness though, because she is one of our front liners. And for her mythic ability, she got leading strike. What is it? Uh, thundering blows is. Yeah, yeah. So once per round, if we miss, we deal damage anyway. So we're going to grab that. Then we're about to have to go handle our kind of out of control inventory here. After we learn everything we can learn. Then we're going to handle everything we need to do in town. Which is a decent amount, actually. She can learn a lot of stuff. Okay, so there's everything she can learn. Leading strike, yeah, um, it deals damage when she hits something, because she's our frontliner. Um, okay, so what all do we need to do? We're not going to talk to Greybore until we're ready to do the damage. We do need to talk to So Seal, and we need to start building up our Crusade stuff pretty much immediately. But... First, we're going to start selling everything. Pick up our bag of holding straight away. For weapons, nobody's going to use Voice of the Hollow. Nobody's going to use Warhammer or this one. As much as I like that dueling sword, nobody's going to use it. Hunter's pretty much outdated. Uh, Longsword plus two we don't need. We're going to save that War Axe. I think that might be better for Grey Boar, but we'll talk to him when we get the chance. We can get rid of that. Soul Shear we'll hold on to. We don't need this, so we can sell it. We can sell this regular full plate. Nobody else uses it. We'll hold on to this stuff in the barding. We can get rid of that one. That one's outlived its usefulness. That one's only useful in super specific situations, but we'll keep it on, or we'll keep it around just in case. We don't have anybody who's going to be using Rage. We need to get rid of some of these scrolls. We'll keep the undeath to death. Stone skin can go away. 
I'll keep the wisdom that can come up sometimes. Stuff. And we'll hold on to the rest of it for a little while. Just in case. I'm going to sell the meta magic rods. We're not going to need them. And uh, little strength potions. Okay. Sweet. I uh, don't think he has anything we really need right this second. We are going to go talk to the new cleric in town, which will have some stuff we want. Okay, so... Blacksmith, exotic weapons. Let's talk to the blacksmith real quick. Nothing we need. All right. I think she sells scrolls. Oh, and she also sells some robes. Pretty sure she sold scrolls. Okay. Don't think she really sells anything we need right this second, though. Cleric might have some that we're gonna grab. Oh. Okay. That could be pretty handy, but it's very expensive. And there's a couple things we want from the cleric vendor. If you want the secret ending, use Midnight Blade. Yeah, yeah. Just a second, guys. There we go. Okay, so we're going to talk to the cleric. She's got some cool items. Yeah, Ring of Pyromania. So this will deal extra fire damage. Uh, we're going to give this to Ember. Which is just straight up more damage for her, really. Which is one of the most like direct extra damage things you can get. She already has uh, more than what that staff would give us. And Blaze of Disaster gives Fireball instead of Burning Arc. That's expensive, but it's worth it. Give the better cloak to her. Nice. I'm okay. So there's most of our inventory sorted out. Uh, what do we do for our quest? Talk to Irabeth. Uh, High Miss Crusaders. Crusaders. Okay.
we're gonna go talk to Socio real quick, and then we're gonna go into our Citadel and get that started. to our citadel. Gotta handle all our crusade stuff, CR comes, then we gotta start doing troop buildup, all that stuff. So, Act 3 is gonna take us a lot longer because we gotta do a lot of things. And truthfully, I have a feeling Act 3 is where we're gonna lose most of the participants, honestly. <laughs> If I turn my archers into marksmen and my footmen into champions, not sure what's a good promotion for scouts. Um, scouts are kind of whatever, to be honest. Scouts aren't that great. Okay, first thing we need to build. Teleportation circle. So I can only buy material points. I can't buy the energy points I need for that. But the teleportation circle is the thing we want very quickly. And I think, yeah, we need more, need more material points. So before we do all that, we're gonna check what our army looks like. Okay, so. Get out of here, go to the actual world map, and then we can start looking at our crusade stuff before we start moving anywhere. We actually need to talk to Erebeth while we're up here. If you finish the game before Monday, I'll stay. Um, I'll stream a little bit tomorrow, and then it won't be again until Wednesday, but it's going to be a hot minute. Okay, talk to Erebus. Talk to Anivia. I'll get that underway, then we'll head to the world map. Drazi says, you mentioned earlier a few others have died today and yesterday. Where do you see that? I don't see any recent updates either on Reddit or Twitter. Um, they have a Discord for all the participants, so I see that stuff, generally speaking, a little bit before you guys will. Um, 
Yeah, so we have the one who died by the water elemental. Drass died yesterday. Cormac died. Yeah, Cormac, I think it is, died very recently. And I think that was it. I don't think anybody else died. Okay. I'm gone. Oh, yeah, I always forget. When you're in Azada, you have to drag Ivu along with you. And sometimes I forget to hit the button. Come on. Okay. So we're not going to talk to the Grey Boar until we're ready. Drop Regil. Bring Camilla back in. Okay, so we want the teleport circle first because then we can teleport back to town. And we need to build the stables and stuff as quickly as we can so we can get all that. We should only get a few a day. What does our actual army look like? Got a few here. Ugh, this is where it always gets annoying because they're all like right on top of each other. all I can take there and we'll leave these guys on top of Dresden and now we're gonna clear out all of these easier battles real quick to get the finance points and stuff Scouts are not be able to do any damage to that thing, really. I think there's a, another unit down there. All right. And our Hell Knights attack you. Have our scouts help with these and Get these guys gone, and then it's going to take forever to kill the gargoyles. Okay, now we just gotta hit the gargoyles repeatedly until they die. Because they have a ton of health, but aren't really capable of doing any damage to us. Don't forget to build things in your forts. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're working on right now. That's actually our first focus before we go start running off doing quests. I only had the the fight thing on because I figured we'd be able to just like if you if you have a vastly overpowered army, a lot of times the enemy will run away and do the auto resolve even if you don't have it turned on, which I thought would happen here, but I was wrong. Yeah. 
Okay, here we go. Almost there. Knights should do it, yeah. There we go. Weak to magic, use mage general. I'm not worried about the mage general. We'll be fine. We're just wiping out the weak armies that we can nearby real quick. At least this one's gonna go a bit faster. Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of buildings and stuff that we'll be building as soon as we can. Gonna knock out the uh, easier to win battles here, though. Because we need some energy points for the teleportation circles and material points for the everything else. Okay. So we're going to take these two out, and we're probably going to double back and take these two out that are green. Basically just trying to hit all the ones that are green right this second. And then we'll post our army back up on top of Dresden so we don't get attacked. Where do you place your second teleport circle? You can place them just in any fort, really. Okay, try to kill the marksman pretty quick. Could run over there. Might get our scouts annihilated, though. We're going to do it. We only left one ranger, so we're going to attack something else. Sorry, right, those guys. Really after my cleric. Nice. Extra attack for high morale. Yeah, unfortunately, like, I have to stream all of the Crusade stuff as well. Because, like, all, all of it has to be streamed, so. Even though this is uh, a little on the dull side, in my opinion, I do have to stream it for the competition. Have you played the South Park RPG games? I've played in 100% of both of them, actually. I like I like both of those. Those are really funny.
I've never bothered to review them on the channel, but if you look at my Steam profile, I've, I've got them both 100% uh, actually. <laughs> There we go. Is there a way to remove units you don't want aside from suiciding them? You can move them into a separate army. Bryce has a heavy hand there, which you already had. I get to go again. Sometimes I get those high morale extra attacks and I takes me a second to realize why I'm getting another movement. In my experience, it's best to leave the Vescavore swarms alone because they're usually a summon of the Darachne and if you hit them, or you kill all of them before the, the match ends, sometimes it'll just bug you out in an endless loop. Which is hilarious because they're actually bugs, but still. Yeah, see how we won even though the Vescovores are still there? Oh, Thomas checked the uh, cleaving shot with Blood Blast. It works. Nice, nice. On, when we hit rank 5, we'll have to pick up cleaving shot. I wasn't 100% sure because sometimes it's real touchy about the weapon attack versus like actual ranged. Alright, we're going to pick up Master of Maneuver 3, giving us even more troops. And we're going to head back in. So the nice thing about Act 3 is that you're basically not under any sort of time limit anymore. Which means you can skip days and everything as much as you want. slowed by the animal attack there which means our, our cleric can't move at all you use lay on hands though yeah shield bearers do basically nothing um Is the morale system bugged? Even if I win a battle, it still continues to drop. Um, it sounds like you might have you hitting a bug. Sometimes it's a little touchy. finally catch up to that thing where it had slowed me and then it just switched uh, just ran across the map after my archers that's really funny energy points there's what we were after Now we can build our teleportation circle, which is the absolute first thing I always build, because teleportation. And then, we're going to 
gonna buy some points. We need to get these three main stable barracks and archeries up pretty quick. We're gonna buy about 15K worth. That way we can do the main barracks and the archery range very quickly. We're gonna kind of build them in a formation so we can put buildings around them to give them benefits. All right, so next up, so that's the archery range and the barracks. Next up, we need the stables, which costs a bit more material-wise, but we're going to wait on that. But we're going to save our material points until we get to that point so we can get our stables going. Hold on just a second. Okay, and our army. Got to form all of our councils. Oh, wait, whoops. Didn't mean to spend anything on that one. What did that cost us? Material points? Ah, it's not a big deal. Got to drop into Dresden here in a second. But first, we're going to keep plugging away at crusading stuff. Can you click the icon in the top corner? Yeah. That's actually, it'll show you your stats, your morale, uh, your per day energy stuff. Okay, skip day. I think, I'd rather not fight this one if I can get away with it. I think it stops, it should give me like an option. Yeah, there we go. I cleared like 80% of the armies on the map and most of the forest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. too close and then get smacked with the uh, club guy there. Okay, cure. Try to bring some of those guys back up. About the same. I'm trying to get rid of these flies since that's their biggest stack. Gonna, those guys are going to deal a ton of damage to us, but I don't really have anybody else to engage them with. Kill that unit. Should be able to deal some decent damage here. Nice. Didn't get as many of them as I thought it was going to get, so we're doing pretty good. The champions are helping us out for sure.
Did that guy headbutt your horse? Yeah, I mean, yeah, probably. Do not take Winduog's advice for your army. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, everything has its usefulness, but... In general, Winduog is more about strength and everything, and, uh, at the cost of, uh, being actually decent, so... There we go. Okay, and there's the Magician's Ring, which is fantastic, because we're going to give that to uh, Ninio, which is going to increase the save DC against all of her Illusion spell, which is what we're doing, by two. Which, as you can imagine, is absolute nonsense. So it'll be even better for our attempts at Phantasmal Killer. Is it random or you can get some point to choose what ability you want your general to have? Uh, when you level up, you get to choose their abilities from a few like options. But that, uh, that extra save DC from that ring is going to be ridiculous, especially here on normal. Okay. Might kill one of those, might not. We're gonna try to get their main people up though. But I said they use stone throw and they're gonna hit my archers. Didn't really do anything though. That might be the least amount of damage I've ever seen that do. Extra attack, nice. Maybe because of the stone obstacle and where they throw. Uh, I have no idea. I don't think it works like that, but truthfully, we're golden anyway. So we pretty much already won. Haven't found any heavy barding yet. Um, there's like one or two sets you can buy at the very least, I know. I got no way for our scouts to get in there, but that should be the win right there. Okay, and then there's two more armies I want to take out. But I think, yeah, actually, that army's getting pretty close, so. The safe bet would be to park our army back at Dresden, so when that one gets here, we can uh, just destroy it right away. Move these guys over here for right now. Now we gotta talk to several people. That going. Try not to spend too much of our material points because we need 500 of those so we can build our stable. Which at the moment is a bit of a priority. But we've already got the. Because we can't um, like actually generate any troops until you get the main stable barracks and uh, archery range built, which the archery range and the barracks are in progress, but the stable. We still have to build, and we're going to need 500 uh, material points for that. And I could just spend gold on it, but I'd rather not, to be honest. So now we're going to talk to all the people. So, 
So, I need to be able to tell us about Soseal. Captain Selkind is a mercenary unit that joins up with you. Arushale will tell you about Green Gates, which is one of the quests for the act, which is probably what we'll do first, because that one's actually not too bad. Reaching this point in the game overwhelmed me. Yeah, so Act 3 has, like, the most content out of any of the acts. We're going to be in Act 3 for a while. Our military council. Personally, I like champions of these options. I don't like shield bearers. Convicts aren't very good, and neither are conscripts. I personally like champions. Here's our diplomatic council. This will give us the occasional event we can do for a temporary buff so that the choice there doesn't matter that much okay do it my way. Oh, wait, hold on. We're going to talk to... We got a... Man. That's the only thing... Like, the really annoying thing about playing in Azada is you constantly have to wait for Ivu right here. Like, there's just, like, tiny points like that where Ivu has to come with you in town. We're going to head to the temple, pass some time, go to the graveyard, talk to Soseal to deal with his little quest, because that's basically just free XP. Um, yeah, I can't turn Auto Crusade or anything on. It's part of the challenge. Um, I'm, like, you can do the auto battling, I think, but the actual Crusade mode where you have to do all the management and everything, that part does have to be on. Okay, so we're going to skip time to night time. Catch So Seal gambling for his uh, companion quest. And then again, that's just free experience, really. Once we do green gates, we'll probably level 10 anyway. But we're going to focus on some of the crusade stuff first, just to get it out of the way. We're not going to do a lot of expansion by any means, but we need to clear out some room and get everything chugging along. The main thing is getting all of the... like buildings and stuff done like we don't need a ton the main thing is the recruitment ones and then kind of just as you need stuff after that but what jeez royal parade nah, we're not gonna do that right now uh -oh. don't want to spend the resources on that seeing how you build your base will help me a ton i look forward to it um I, honestly, you don't have to be crazy when it comes to like the the base building. You just have to do a decent job. Okay. So we're about to be attacked by that guy. So I really don't want to stray too far. I just pass a few days and let him come on. That way we gather resources. Who is... Thanks. And then the 
marksman, I will move over here. Right, as long as we keep winning battles, we'll be fine. But at some point, we will need to eventually capture a fort. Oh man, skipped that first turn for some reason. That was weird. They're not having a good time. Oh, nice. We got an extra hit there. All right. Should pretty much obliterate these guys, yeah. There we go. So that is our base defended. We have our first recruits that are available from our stables and stuff. Spend our finance points on that. Clear this fort out from in front of uh, Winter Sun. And then, what is our. Hmm. So, the material points are really the thing slowing us down right now. We need. We need to get our main stable built, and then after that, we can start branching out for different buildings and start building teleportation circles elsewhere. But for right now, the bulk of our stuff is moving. We're recruiting troops. That's the important bit. So we're going to take this fort, and then we're going to go try to do some other stuff. All right, so we should be able to take this pretty easily, to be honest. What we might do instead of building that stables is just work on building the um, teleportation circles at our forts. That's a waste. I don't want to do that with the scouts. They'll die pretty fast. Attacks on the giants there. Yeah, this will be pretty easy. I don't see us losing a lot here. Pretty much already won. Oh, nice. Got the high morale hit. We'll 
We'll move our scouts in just because they're not going to do hardly anything, though. Getting a lot of extra attacks through high morale, though. It's always good. Nice. Yeah, the clerics seem to heal a decent amount. Okay, so. Just because we have the movement, we're going to go ahead and take this army too because it's right next to us and we have the movement to do it. But then after that, we're going to grab our team and we're going to come down here to Green Gates and clear that place. Which should bring us to level 10. And then after we clear Green Gates, that's probably where we'll call it for today. Okay, I hate Brimorax. Even on the Crusade screen. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, green gates can be a little tough. Um, we shouldn't have too much trouble. But it can be a pain with all the high-level demons, but we should be okay. I love the champions damage-wise. They just do so much damage compared to like basically everything else. Nice, material points. Sweet. I'm thinking... We're gonna drop this army right here. We're gonna take this army, give it a general, and it's just gonna sit on top of Dresden. That's all we're gonna use it for. And we'll wait for our weekly recruitment. We're not going to add too much because we should have some time before the next army starts heading our way. But this, this guy right here is just going to sit on top of Dresden and keep it safe. And we're going to give him just all the recruits. Might occasionally try to level up their general, but otherwise, that's all we're going to do. And then... We might have to go to the crusade table, but we're going to build teleportation circles in a couple places. Let me see if it'll... Because it's just going to try to make me... Yeah, go there. Hold on. We'll go to the table and do it there. All right. Once we get this little bit done, then we are going to head to Green Gates... Khaled. This is the guy that gives you the black water thing. Which we might do towards the end of Act 3, but if we do it, that'll be like the last thing we do. And 
CR wants you to go help his son in Winter Sun, but you don't actually have to wait for that quest. You can do that whenever you go there. You can X out of the recruitment tab and open it again to get a new list if you don't see the general you want. No, uh, like the generals aren't a huge deal. I don't need like any specific general. We're just on normal. It's not that big of a deal. Mostly I just look for a master of maneuver. As long as they have that, I don't really care. Okay. Going to build a teleportation circle here. Actually, you know what? I don't think we can. Yeah, we got to upgrade it first. I'm always thinking just teleportation circles, and I forget you actually have to. Uh, you have to actually um, get the upgrade to Bastion, I think, or whatever it's called. So. Don't really need anything right this second. Um, I think. Yeah, we'll go ahead and keep saving for the, the stables. I always forget that you have to wait until the Bastion. Because I'm always just like, let's get those teleportation circles down so we can go all the places. All right. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the Master of Maneuver thing. Because uh, Master of Maneuver is... Just the because like, you just get more troops, and there's never a situation where more troops won't usually solve your problem. <laughs> but we're gonna go knock out Green Gates and call it a day. We need a Ruchelet for that, though. So I think it makes the most sense to drop. Winduog, probably, but I really don't want to lose our Smilodon. I think instead we're going to drop Ember for this one. Because her main thing is healing, and she doesn't. she's probably our least in terms of damage, so we'll drop her, pick up a Ruchelet. Don't forget to slay the big red dragon before Greybor leaves you. Um, we'll get to it. Basically, you just have to do that before you go to the um, Ivory Sanctum. As long as you do it before then, you're pretty much fine. I don't know that there's a hard time limit on that at all. All right, we're going to take her auto levels. Party members I'm not going to be using a lot. We're just going to take their auto levels. Because the only reason they're going to be in my group at all is because we're doing their quests now. This is probably Wolgif. Yeah. Okay, let's get everybody buffed up real quick. Are we ready to move out? Yeah, we'll save the stones, can't uh, we? Don't need that. Okay, that should be plenty for this. So this this is part of re-recruiting uh, Wolgif right here, is when you see this one. Just going to let the auto play out. We should have plenty to take care of this. Yeah. See, that took a little bit of damage, but that's about it. Okay, pick up 
pick up all their plus one and the scrolls because that is just free gold. Yeah, some enemies do just randomly have way more XP than the others. Especially towards the end. Most of them give a pretty nominal amount, but then occasionally some of them will give you just tons. Okay. Actually, you know what? I don't think you have to have a Ruchelet with you for that. We'll double check when we get... Now we'll go ahead and before it gets too far away and it takes way longer. Because this is where you go to recruit her if you didn't recruit her in the prison, so I don't think they require you to have like her in the party. Wait, you're leaving Wolgif? No, no, we're recruiting Wolgif. That's just the first act. So first you'll get the one we just did, and then right after that, they'll force you into this random encounter, which is actually where we recruit him at. But that first one it makes you sit through, that one we just did, that's actually the lead-in to get Wolgif. Because it shows you these cultists, and then like right afterwards you'll get this one, which is actually getting Wolgif back. Not going to be using him very much, but... I love that you can, if you're in Azada, you can make Ivu answer this. You can be like, I don't know, ask him. And then Ivu's like, they stole our candy. <laughs> it's just nonsense. Okay, and then that starts Old Jif's quest. Well, provided you take him back into your party, but. We're not taking them with us by any means. There's five out of six available. Okay. On our way to Green Gates. Oh, wait, whoops. I always forget it's this little side one and not like right there. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, so we can enter without a Ruchelet, which is good, because I don't want, I'd rather keep our regular party here. Okay, get everybody buffed up. Okay, should be good. And if Arushla is not with you, she'll do this. Okay, now we just got to watch out for some traps here and there, but the demons themselves shouldn't really be too much of a big deal. There's a trap there. Death is life's final surprise, and I enjoy surprising people. Yeah, yeah, Camilla does go away if you go Aeon. Okay, stealth. This will be quick. Oh, 
on, we're gonna turn turn based on. Okay. We're not gonna get in the way of the Smilodon because we're gonna have it charge either the Vrock or the Darachne one. So we're going to go for the Darachne because it's going to do more damage to us if we don't kill it. So we're going to try to get that down as quickly as we can. And then Monarch can attack the Brock. Okay, and then let's check out our saves. Pretty similar. So now that we have our ring on, our regular has a 25 DC and our heightened has a 26 DC. And everything besides the Darachne has a pretty low save. But first, we're gonna cast haste. Windu got some pretty great damage there. Then Ivu has a ridiculous move turn. She can move like 80 feet. We could move all the way over here and still use her breath weapon. Okay, and then Sila's gonna charge that guy. We can't you we can't turn empowered. I think it'll still yeah yeah it'll still cost us burn even if we do that. So at eleven we should be able to turn. I think it is eleven, right? Yeah yeah. I think at eleven we can take it down to a point where we can use it on top of everything else as well, without taking more. Speaking of though, we need to turn our elemental overflow on. Really don't want to take another one, so we're gonna move forward. Close to the heavens, the devastator to kill it. Ember. We will just have Scorching Ray the Babao. Which killed the Babao. And now we just gotta get rid of this guy. How am I compensating for lack of shield faith prayer from not having a divine caster? Um, so you can cast prayer with like scrolls and stuff. You really don't need it that much. Honestly, we get so much from everywhere else. We're not really hurting for anything. Something to remember is that we're on normal and we don't need to have every buff up all the time. Here in a couple mythic levels, we'll start doing pretty well, though, because um, Azada will start giving us teamwork feats, plus um, we'll start getting um, Cat's Grace or whatever. Yeah, Mass Cat's Grace from Ninio. But we're doing well, don't worry. I do what I must. We got Aridem's Wrath. Now that alters the Paladin Smite Evil. It changes their AC bonus it grants from Deflection to Sacred. But it's a usable item and not just something you can throw on somebody and forget about. Nobody reach that? Like, what is the issue? It's not letting me loot that for some reason. All right. There's something here. So we're gonna have. What's on your mind? Camellia, disarm you? these traps. I am helpful. There's am I another not? one, like right here, I think. Yeah, there it is. 
She didn't see it. <laughs> that one's not bad, though. Truthfully, it's really hard to get to the trigger of that one anyway, so we were probably just going to send Monarch after it. But that works just as well. Okay, critical. Try to heal Blood Maw. There's an annoying fight at the top of these stairs, but once that's done, we should be in good, good shape. I can do this. Okay. Now we are making a mystery of ourselves. This fight's annoying because they start you out in a really bad spot. And there's enemies over here you can't even see. Okay. Nice. Okay. So we one shot the Dirachne, which was nice. We're gonna move Ivu kind of over here. We don't want to move her too close because she doesn't have her breast weapon yet. And then move Camellia up. Smilodon. We can't charge because of our weird spot, but what we can do is move in, which should give us some sight. We're actually gonna put him like right here, which might turn him into a sacrificial lamb for these two. According to this, I, oh yeah, there's another Dirachne over there. I always forget about that one. All right. Oops, Sila over here. And we're gonna use, we can't really use Close to the Heavens even from here, so just gonna kinda move in. Could cast Volcanic Storm there, but it's probably better if I didn't, truth be told. Yep. Could potentially slumber the stuff here. I'd have to make a save. But for now, we're just going to move up. Ivy right there. Get that, and then Camellia. Just gonna walk over and hopefully kill this guy. Yeah. Okay. Then I would like to ideally take one of these guys out before they get a chance to hit us. They have an acid spit that's really annoying. There we go. Dirachnes always start with drone, even if they're not close enough to actually hit anything with drone. Which he was not. Okay. Take five foot step. Because we're slowed from that stupid thing's acid breath or whatever it is. And Scorching Ray. And then we're going to use a regular Phantasmal. Oh no, he's still on hand. She got slowed too, didn't she? No? 
I should be able to reach him then. Why is it? He's trying to tell me I have to go farther than that. So I shouldn't really need to. Yeah, I don't know why it tried to tell me I couldn't do that. Failed to save at any rate. Cat rolled really well. Okay. Ivu already got its breath weapon back. Yeah, I was, I was pretty sure it would be close enough for a full attack there, but. All right. Get the Windmaster helmet there. Which doesn't really do us a lot of good, to be honest. But that gives you uh, four bonus to initiative. We'll probably wind up just selling that. Okay, and then there's a trap. And we go into the belfry. As soon as our Smilodon stops freaking out. Oh, then we loot this guy for a pretty cool flail. Ring the bell, which gives us a buff. All right, I forgot to grab the, the clapper. I'll have just somebody to grab it. What level is it now? Uh, we're not quite level 10. We should be level 10 when we leave here. Hold on, we gotta... I forgot to grab... that. Are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> look at that nonsense. Like, this little corner right here is just so many problems. <laughs> what do we have All right, here? here's where the clapper for the bell is, and then we can come back, ring that bell, which gives us a buff, and then we can fight them, and then the hag, and killing the hag should get us all the way to level 10, actually. Which sounds like a lot, but it should it should do it. If it doesn't get us entirely there, it should get us like right at it. All right. So that gives us the good hope buff for an hour, which is a, t a plus two morale bonus to basically everything. But, We have a morale bonus from a few other things that doesn't stack on our main guy. Not that it matters, because everybody else can still use it. Mobility. <laughs> alright, alright. So, the next batch of demons is right over here. Let me heal everybody that took a little damage. We'll move forward. Arushale will attack once we kind of get near. Okay, we're going to move Ninio up. Move Ivu. Like right there. And. We're going to try to have Ninio use her other heightened on that guy. Ah, I missed it. Okay, we're still good, though. Uh, 
Now beyond that, we need to finish off this retriever. Arushale brings it down like way far in terms of health, so we should be more than okay there. And they'll skip their turn, their first turns, because we surprised them, which is why I always try to start combat from stealth, if you're ever wondering that, by the way. Because if you start combat from stealth and actually get the first hit in, they'll lose their first turn. All right, there's that one gone. That one, the retriever is capable of doing the most damage in one turn, though some of these are still potentially dead. So we'll cast haste. Have Monarch come in. Gonna move Winduog pretty far in here. Sheila is gonna take an attack. So the, the annoying things about the Gibberleth is that they have a ridiculous range. They have a reach weapon because they have these whips. So they get attacks of opportunity and stuff all the time. Else, can I? I can't make it to him, can I? All right. Well, we're gonna walk up to him then. Okay. And now, can I have Ember? Do that. Ivu is going to hit Monarch, but I think Monarch's getting used to it at this point. Okay, so that killed that one. Can I charge? I can't charge you. I can charge the big guy. Which, he's about half dead, so I think that's who we're going to charge. And then see if we can get lucky this time and use the phantasmal killer on that guy. Dead. Move in. He's close to the heavens. The hag is a little bit tougher, but it's no, just you fall. against her. Yes. You can't beat a dead horse. That's why Monarch feels alive when you beat him. <laughs> Dude, ah, uh, man, like that. Like I've never gotten that much use out of a pet. Like Monarch has been crushing it this game. Like Smilodon's probably doing uh, Demon Bane or Smilodon or Blood Maw rather, is uh, doing most of our like charge damage. But Monarch has been just incredibly useful across the board, and he sure can take a hit. All right, and then oh, did we not? Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. So she can be a little tough because she's got a lot of stuff going on. All right. Pass. Okay. Turn on our inheritor because it fell off again. Now. Don't hold back. Yeah. So she's got displacement and protection from arrows on. The Blood Rage is permanent. You can't do anything about that. Good amount of damage reduction. Alright, so the 
primary thing we're concerned with is her displacement at the moment. So that's gonna be annoying. Rather than, I could probably, I could start our performance. We might as well do that. Cause I'd like a chance to dispel her with Ember before we do too much. Haste with Ninia. Nice. Okay, we... Yeah, we dispelled the displacement, so that's awesome. Now, Wendy should have a pretty good hit here. Uh, the unknown key followed by a bunch of numbers. That's that's like a placeholder item. That's when they they have an effect, but for whatever reason, the game like doesn't actually have a name for it. Basically, it's it's like a typo, but uh, pointing towards what it's supposed to be. All right, we're gonna have her turn on battle spirit. Go for their hearts. Please help me. Okay, well. Arushalay, I wouldn't necessarily attack when she's right next to you. That's on you. All right. Then we're going to smite evil the and walk up. Guide my blade. Don't think I'll be able. To, yeah, I said I don't think I'd be able to get the charge from right there. I fear I've been wounded. Arushalay can't actually die though, but because. We took a second to get in the room. She's focused on Arushale, but Arushale is not like killable during this quest. <laughs> okay, now that she doesn't have displacement on, we might actually be able to hit her. Yeah, there we go. Okay, she's not immune to magic missiles, is she? Can't imagine. Yeah. Like random stuff is immune to magic missiles. That's why I always check. Nice, there we go. Greybor might leave you if you don't hunt the dragon soon enough. Is that true? Um, I kind of, I think, I think that uh, you have to go hunt the dragon before you go to Ivory Sanctum. Otherwise he shows up there. That's, I believe that's the gist of it. Okay, now kill the hag. If you don't kill her here, she tries to kill you. Yeah, we're gonna hunt the dragon. We're uh, we'll we'll hunt the dragon before we go to Ivory Sanctum, but we're not in a rush to do it because I don't want to deal with that dragon just yet because it's really annoying. But honestly, like, it's not that expensive, even if you don't. Okay, so we just gained, like, 6,500 XP. Rushale was already in our party. So we don't have to recruit her again. Then we gain even more experience from that quest completion. Which puts us incredibly close. We didn't quite clear it, but we are very close to level 10. I figured it would actually get us there, but what are you going to do? Okay. Beautiful. Now we go back to where the hag was, because she has some amazing loot over here. Actually, that might be something useful to use the initiative helmet for. Yeah, yeah. So the problem with the, the dragon is that it hits you in a random encounter that puts you immediately into combat. And what you need to do is cast uh, protection from energy fire. But if the dragon goes, it will immediately use its breath weapon. And if you don't get the person who has the resist fire to use it before you get hit with the breath weapon, it's going to cause you a lot of pain. So we don't need either of these. They're probably going to sell them, but Jernica, or whatever her name is, has amazing uh, stuff. So this is amazing for Blood Rager. It's just free fast healing while you're in your rage. And then 
quarter staff we can't really use, but it sells for a ton. 8k, as you can see there, because it's a quarter staff plus 4. Which I imagine if you're running a monk would be super handy to have this early in the game. Not that I would be caught dead using one myself. Because I don't like monks. In case I haven't made that clear. Alright, get Ivu over here. Crippling Kiss is also really cool if you want to use an S-Stock. That has a naturally really big crit range. A little less damage, but, you know, it's offset by the crit range. If you're using uh, anybody who's doing, like, finesse stuff and they can spec into an S-Stock, you can get some crazy damage out of that. Which you get that from the containers right over here. Okay, almost done. Now Gonna come over here, loot a little bit. Use our Azada to reinvigorate the land. I found oh, trap. Something. You can trust me. Ah, she triggered it. She caught the corner of it. But it's fine. Alright, so this is cool. This is the this is an Azada thing. They can like push back the corruption of some areas, which I always thought was kind of cool. This. And then we get some of this, and then the belt of physical perfection, which is pretty great. But like honestly, we don't need strength, so we're not going to use it. Um, who can use it though is Sila, because she'll get the Dex bonus from her AC plus the stuff from that. We could conceivably give it to her, but she's already got the bonuses from Strength and Dex as well. So it does, it's kind of like, eh, either or, really. Alright, so... We're going to come loot that container, and then... We're going to head back to Dresden, sell our stuff, see what we can do Crusade-wise before we call it a day. Do it my way. All right, is our teleport? Yes. Okay, so our teleportation circle is built, which means we can teleport directly back to Dresden now, which is awesome. And eventually, once we start getting forts upgraded, we can build them at our forts, too. Which is going to help you really just zip around the map. Let's see what we can do building-wise. Alright, so... We're about to sell a bunch of stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and buy more material points for a few thousand. And then we are going to build our main stable right there. All right, then we're going to kind of pepper buildings around that. And then the stuff that the buildings that we uh, that get bonuses without being around these, we'll just put like in these areas and then we'll start building stuff around there. We're going to build a supply center as well, because that's going to give us material point income, which is really what we're lacking right now. So even though it's not a lot, anything's more than what we've got. All right, get into town, do our regular stuff, and we will be golden. Yeah, 
So until you go to Ivory Sanctum, I'm pretty sure you have all the time in the world. As long as you do it before you go there. But we're going to go to the streets, talk to CR for that one quest, and then sell all our junk. Yeah, I wouldn't build them in literally every fort, the teleportation circles. I would build them in a select few. Like, there's a couple portions of the map that are, like, technically difficult to rain, and they take your character forever to travel through. And I usually build the fort, like, the circles around places to, uh, like, anything that'll help me avoid that, basically. Yeah, you only get to upgrade a, a couple of the... Yeah, that's a good point, actually. You, you only can upgrade, like, I think it's three of them off the top of my head. Because they have to be at the second level before you can put the teleportation circle down. All right, talk to Guy for his quest. He wants us to go to Winter Sun. Which will be the second place we are going. Because we're going to go to the Molten Scar first. I mean, next stream, so like tomorrow. We're not doing it today, but we're going to do Molten Scar, which is attack out of nowhere. And then we're going to do Winter Sun after that. Okay, and then this guy and I think it's this guy. One of your captains that shows up for your council can actually give you a quest, and I want to say it's him. No, I think it's, it must be the other guy. There is one of the captains will give you a quest to go to like a mine or something. Might be the dude over here. I'll check. Andre said, great stream. One time. Oh, well, that's something. <laughs> yeah, it's Captain. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's the other guy. I was like, one of the captains gives you a quest to go check out some mines, which then turns into something later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, there he is. There it is. We won't be doing that for a while, but you can get it. And we got some free experience for the checks. All right, we're going to sell our, all our junk to Arseno and call it. Sold. Cool, but we don't use crossbows. Demon's Terror. I actually like this. This is a cool, this is a cool flail you can use for that Blood Rager build I made, actually. It's one of the cooler ones you can get. Quarter staff. Soul shear we'll hold on to. Breastplate's useless. That's useless. We'll hold on to those two. We'll hold on to that for now. Might give that to one of our pets, actually. That's probably what we'll do with it. That's worth so much, and we don't have a Blood Rager, so it's useless. We'll hold on to that. Somebody can probably use that. Okay. All right, we're going to rest. And probably do whatever it forces us to do at the Citadel while we're at it. It's been a lot of fun, Mortismal. Will you be continuing your other walkthrough as well as this, the new focus and walkthrough? I'm probably not going to do both at the same time. Once this is over, I might go back to like the, the live playthrough I was doing. This competition is just kind of dominating my time at the moment.
Okay. All healed up. Then we got... This is the Trickster Mythic Path guy, but we are not Trickster, so... Can't do anything with it. And with that... I believe we're going to... So I gotta hit... Um, I have to force the creation of a save for the competition rules. Which they ask you to send a... Uh, send it in as a suggestion bug report. But... This forces the creation of a save for the last is Lanti mode, and that's why they want you to do it. It's part of the competition. Because it'll force the creation of a save, and that way there's like zero. See, I see where it says game save. That way there's zero problems. But uh, that's going to do it, guys. We're going to leave it there. I should be streaming tomorrow, probably in the afternoon sometime, Central Standard Time, probably around maybe 2-ish. I have an appointment I have to go through in the morning, and... Kind of just whenever I get done with that, I'll be coming home and dealing with this. But thank you guys so much. Uh, it was honestly fun interacting with chat. Uh, hope you guys have an amazing day. May you wander in wisdom. I'll see you next time.